Just the person I like to see, I, a I, camera. I don't know who you I think you know. are. I'm trying to cause a riff in the backseat voice. What's that? We're international superstars. We're the best tag team in the world. The only thing in the sky you're going to be seeing are the lights. Because T Acid is coming in the jersey, it's taking you out. I'm the man. Hey, yo. <laughs> I'm the best of the best champion. I got nothing else to prove. Bring them. Japan, Germany, Amsterdam, East, North, South, West, wherever the hell you're from. Come on down to where my home is in CZW. Of course. I'm the best of the best. 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 All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a very special simulcast as False Count Radio, in association with the Wrestling Soup, proudly present the Trent Acid Tribute Show. Tonight, I am one of your hosts, the Pacific Coast player, J.T. Evans, on behalf of False Count Radio. I'd like to welcome my co-host for the evening, on behalf of the Wrestling Soup, Anthony Missionary Thomas. How are you doing? Uh, thank you very much for that introduction there, J.T. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing pretty good, you know, um, considering... Me and you have literally been uh, uh, recording interviews all week and and listening to some very heartfelt emotion and and some very detailed thoughts and and, and just it, it's it's amazing how many people and just how people felt and I mean there's so many people that we couldn't even get a hold of that should have done this show that would have done this show you know just to express their love and admiration of of the life that was Trent Acid. You know, Trent was a great guy, of course, you know, all throughout his life, he was, you know, a superstar, you know, in and out of the ring, he lived his life like a superstar to the fullest. I think one of the best quotes I have heard is um, from his best friend, Billy Real, and that was, it's your life, book it the way you want, and then Jet, and I'd have to say that that's pretty much what Trent did, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's actually, it was a pretty funny quote to hear that, but uh, it, it means so much, I mean, just coming from a fan, of professional wrestling and enjoying, you know, the time that I saw Trent Acid and CZW, uh, along with Cashmere doing the backseat boys and everything else like that. It's it's just amazing, you know, the matches that he's had and and the amount of dedication he has to wrestling and the amount of dedication his friends and fans and family have to him. Very true. And tonight here on the broadcast, you're going to be hearing from a lot of uh, Trent's friends, both in and out of the business. Um, you'll be hearing from such people as Johnny Cashmere, his tag team partner, the Pretty Hate Machine, Jason Gotti. We're going to be hearing from referee Mike Keener, uh, Billy Real, Dave Donovan, Devin Moore, DJ Hyde. Uh, you know, the list goes on and on. They've all, you know, decided to give their time and come on the broadcast tonight, so you're going to be hearing from them. And we might have some call-ins. If you're a fan and you want to share a memory of Trent Acid, you're more than welcome to call in. The call-in number is one three four seven nine nine four two three two zero. The call-ins will be open all throughout the show for you to call in and, uh, you know, share some memories about Trent's career. If you ever got a chance to meet him, you could share that as well. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of fans that have special moments and memories. Maybe they saw, you know, Trent Acid and Johnny Cashmere live. You know, maybe they just remember some moments from their DVDs, or or maybe there was a promo that you know he he actually caught and and people loved it and had something to say about it. I mean, there was just so many different aspects. You know, um, I I, I mean, I know we're gonna get into it later, but Johnny Cashmere pr- pretty much put it best. I mean, it didn't matter what Trent Acid was put up against. You know comedy, hardcore, spot match. It, it didn't matter. It didn't matter what you gave Trent Acid. He would always give you five stars, no matter if there was five people in the audience or 5,000. He was just such a consummate performer. Very true. I mean, Trent got the chance to work in, in such companies as Combat Zone. He worked for Ring of Honor. He did TNA before TNA was even really talked about on the main level. I mean, he was one of the forefront guys in TNA back when they were in the asylum. I mean, there's a match actually on YouTube that I found, and it's also on Johnny Cashmere's Facebook. It's a fatal four-way four tag team match featuring the Backseat Boys. Did you check that out? Yeah, actually, I did. I mean, it's. I remember actually seeing that uh, uh, back during the weekly pay-per-view matches. So, it, it's no surprise that you know Trent Acid made it in TNA, and he, it, it's actually more of a surprise that he didn't. Uh, become more mainstream that he wasn't the guy that we see week to week on tv but that doesn't take anything away from his talent and his ability the the man was just so impressive all the way around and um you know i mean at at this point i'd love to sit there and talk a little bit about acid fest acid fest is a tribute to trent acid at the former ecw arena on saturday 
July 10th at 2.30 bell time. Uh, admission is free with a $10 donation to the Trenathan Memorial Fund, which will go to help the family pay for the funeral costs. Seating is first come, first served. There will be no general admission or front row seats. The event will consist of six wrestling matches featuring all of Trent's best friends. Main event, Johnny Cashmere versus Devin Moore versus John Zandick may happen. Uh, also on the card, there will be a tag team uh, spectacular as Homicide and B-Boy take on Sanjay Dutt and Ruckus. That match right there is worth coming for. Um, there will be the Trent Acid Memorial Rumble, and already guaranteed to be there are uh, Nick Burke, Missy Sampson, Todd Gordon, Gary Wolf, uh, Reckless Youth. You'll also have the likes of Amy Lee, the Carnage Crew. There's a lot more on the card, and uh, I do believe if you go to czwrestling.com, the full lineup and all the details are there for people that want to check that event out. And I know that uh, the admission is free. Uh, with a $10 donation. Um, they are accepting larger donations. Obviously, the donations are going to pay for the funeral costs of Trent Acid and uh, to help the family with any of the needs resulting from that. Um, there will also be charity T-shirts sold live at the event, not on the Internet. And I know that there is also a, a stream um, going on right now dedicated to Trent Acid's matches of his career. And actually, I do believe that there is a DVD available on the internet of Trent's best matches. You actually talked about that, and I do believe you get like to see, you get it on your computer for a week, if I'm not mistaken, when you download it. It's uh, www.hybrident, as in entertainment, dot TV. And uh, you can pretty much go there and get the, paper, the Trent Acid paper stream um, all proceeds go to the Acid Memorial Fund to help pay for the funeral expenses. Um, also, follow the Acid Fest on Twitter at Acid Fest, and please like, uh, go to Facebook or whatever, and search for the Backseat Boys with a Z, and press like. Uh, also on the official Wikipedia f Facebook page, please help spread us spread the word about Acid Fest. Um, all proceeds are, are, like I said once before, and say it again probably a few more times throughout the show, they are going to the family to help any and all costs. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you can put, you know, the poster on your uh, friend's Facebook walls, put it as your default, you know, send it through emails, do a, a viral, you know, a, a huge viral press for it. Send it to everybody you know. That would be great. Um, why don't we go ahead and hear from Dave Donovan first? How's that sound? That sounds good. All right. We'll be right back. Here is Dave Donovan. All right, and we are here on the Trent Acid Tribute Radio Show, and on the live with me, I have Dave Donovan. How are you doing? Hey, what's up, JD? How are you doing, buddy? Uh, you know, could be better, but, uh, you know, we're here talking about Trent and trying to share some good memories about him. Yeah. What is one thing that you feel Trent would want his fans to remember him for? Oh, my God. <laughs> There's so much. Uh, I guess I guess his in-ring antics. You know, every everything everything that he did in the ring was was for the marks, and it was all over him, almost all of it. You know, he was just the the entire the entire gimmick of trying to acid was just being the entertainer and river and fun loving. You know, he just he loved to play. That's all. It, you know, that was him. Um, if if I was if I was his biggest fan, the thing I guess I would remember the most about him was that he went out there every single time, and no matter what kind of shape he was in, no matter how bad he was hurting, he gave it every fucking thing he had. Oh my God, hundred and fifty percent all the way. So would you say that's what stood out most to you about him? Oh God, yeah. His work ethic was just un unreal, unreal. Now, is there any stories uh, or memories of being around him or working with him that you'd like to share with our listeners? <laughs> Actually, yeah. Here's something, here's something a lot of people don't know. He spent a lot of time on my couch watching Jerry Springer with me. <laughs> <laughs> 10.58 in the morning, 10.58 in the morning, every morning he'd be pounding on the door, Wake up, Mark! Come on, you Mark! Get your ass up! Open the fucking door, you Mark! I want to watch Springer with you, Mark. Every single day. <laughs> and well, you know, at the time I lived right around the I lived around the corner from him. I had Gary Wolf two blocks the other way, and Anthony uh, Durani like four blocks up the other way. So one morning Gary's walking the dog. He had he had these nice pit bulls, but he's out walking his dogs, and he can hear him two blocks away. Come on, you Mark, open the fucking door. Oh my God! The kid was hilarious, and every time, every time something, you know, a tranny would walk out, he'd look over and he'd go, "Mark, Mark, 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 Mark." I mean, that was like his favorite word. 
That's that. That was his every day, every single day. It's Mark, Mark, Jerry Springer, Mark, Jerry Springer, Mark. I love that kid, man. I miss him. So I mean, I'm sitting on the couch right now, and it's not it's not the same couch that that, that me and him sat on in Philly because I moved down here to Tampa. But I mean. The other day, I was watching the weather, and I got up to go get a drink, and I came back, and I didn't touch the remote. I came back, Jerry Springer was on. I sat down and started giggling my ass while I was thinking about him. And uh, <laughs> it's funny, but out of the blue, out of nowhere, they went dead silent on there. Nobody was saying nothing, and all I heard was, Mark, Mark, Mark next to me. Like, he was still there. I oh, swear wow. to God, I looked around the house. There was nobody else here. My roommates were gone. I'm the only one sitting on the couch watching this crap because I didn't even turn it on because I had no intention of watching it ever again after that. So, yeah, tell me, tell me he ain't standing up there laughing his ass off at us while we're fucking marking out for him. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, if you were to write a book about Trinastic Flight, what would you call it? <laughs> Here, Marky, 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 Mark. <laughs> That's that. that was his favorite, man. I mean, there's no getting around it. He just he he loved to play with everybody, man. He was such he was such a free spirit, and when he was on target with shit, he was really on target, man. The kid was incredible. He was he was definitely a one of a kind. There's never going to be another Trent Acid again, never. I, I, and if there is, I swear to God, I hope to God that kid comes to me for me to train him, because I swear I will make him just like Trent. <laughs> he will be everything Trent was. And it's, it's, it's just, there's no way around it, man, because it's going to come along. Some kid is going to walk up to me at some point and go, hey, man, yo. He's going to say, hey, yo, yo. Let's go get a cheesesteak and talk about training me. Come on, man, yo. Yeah, I miss that kid, man. Now, if there was one thing you did get to tell Trent that you would like him to know, what would it be? I was fortunate. I talked to him a week before he passed. And uh, one of the last things we talked about was uh, I, I've been having a lot of knee problems the last few years, and, and I'm really stubborn about going to get surgery and getting fixed up and shit. And uh, one of the last things he said to me was, you know, I really want you to get your old ass way, your old ass wheels fixed up so, uh, you know, I can give you that Yakuza kick one more time, cuz. And don't worry, I'll sell you a lariat. I'll sell you a lariat. And uh, the last the, the, the last parting shot that I got in on him was, number one, your Yakuza kick sucks ass. There's more light in that son of a bitch than fucking there is a goddamn GE factory. And number two, you have no choice but to sell my lariat, kid. Now, if that's all you got to say, I really got to go. And he goes, no, 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 I got one more thing. Mark, and he hung up. <laughs> yeah. Tell me that's not a recurring theme in, in Trent Acid's life. <laughs> it's always all about a mark. Now, uh, my co-host Mission has a couple questions, so Mission, I go ahead. Hey, how's it going, Donovan? Um, one of the questions I had uh, uh, was Trent Acid's crowning achievement or his crowning moment in his career, in your opinion. The one thing that he looked forward to the most that, that, that I know about was always going to Japan. He was a big Japanese wrestling mark, man, big time. I mean, this kid, he would study tapes and study them more and study them more. And he, he was wearing them out, man. He took a couple of them. He even stole a couple of mine out of the house. And <laughs> when I called him on it, he was like, no, man, I didn't take a shit. Yeah, I'm watching it right now. Why? You know, it, going to Japan was what he wanted the most. And when he went over there and, and, and became the, the, the success over there that he was, yeah. that, that was the pinnacle right there for him. The only, the only other thing that he would have really wanted to do would have been wearing tag team straps in WWE or, you know, that heavyweight title. I mean, that's, the WWE heavyweight title is like the one that everybody wants anyway. So, yeah. But his, his big moment was definitely Japan. Definitely. Oh, my God. The kid, that's all he talked about. I can't wait to go to Japan. I'm going to get announced from South Philly, Japan when I come back. <laughs> yeah, okay. What? South Philly, Japan. That's, yeah, that'll get over. Uh-huh. <laughs> it did. I had to eat my words on that too. The little son of a bitch. <sighs> what was God, uh, that kid. what was Trent's biggest goal in life? I, you know, honestly, outside of outside of the business, I don't think he had any other goal because he pretty much lived it and breathed it, man. It was that was that was pretty much all he did. It's all he ever really wanted to do. I mean, he, it wasn't like he wanted to be a computer expert at IBL or nothing. Cause I, don't, I don't think he knew how to work a computer. 
I don't, I don't think you knew what the buttons were for. <laughs> you wondered why there were letters on them, but yeah, I don't think you really knew what they were for. Uh-huh. So, what's um, my, my last question is, uh, what's the one thing about Michael Verdi you'll miss? That evil little fucking smile, man. You knew he was up to something. He'd get this grin on his, and it's in most of the pictures that you can find on the on the uh, on Cashmere's Facebook on, in his uh, Trent tribute gimmick. He's got this, this and, and and every time the Nickelback song "Rockstar" comes on, the the one the one line to get you anything was an evil smile. That was him, man. That was him because that grin got the girls. That grin got you know people cracking up. That grin meant that he was getting ready to start some shit with somebody or get this one riled up or agitate that one or, you know, rib somebody. It it meant so many different things, but you always knew that behind that smile was wheels turning at full pace, man. (laughs) It was was sick, dude. He was such a sick kid sometimes. Oh, my God. But, But, you know, nonetheless, no matter how sick he was and how sick he got, he was always funny. Always. He'd always find something to bust up. I can remember sitting on my couch with him and about five other guys, and I've got pictures of this. I've got pictures and video to prove this shit. I have a, a blue nosed American Staffordshire Terrier named Frankie. Mm-hmm. And Frankie, mm-hmm. Frankie likes to hump people's legs. <laughs> Frankie walked over, and Trent had his legs spread out, and he had it stretched out in front of him. Frankie thought that was an invitation, so he grabbed the hold and he started he started trying to go to town and Trent looked down. He went, Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and then he starts bumping his balls with his foot. Hey, get him on. Hey, get him on, hey, get him on, hey, get him on. Kept going, kept going. He's going, ah, 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 ah. All of a sudden the fucking dog squirts on his leg. <laughs> The only thing Trent did was looked up, he looked around, he, he had that smile on his face, and he went, that's how you make a motherfucker happy. You make him bust a knot on your leg. <laughs> I died. Oh, my God, I fell out. The whole room just fucking burst. Dude, Jerry Lynn was sitting there for this. Uh, God, I think Pinky Sanchez. B-Boy might have been there. I can't really remember because we had like two gallons of Jack Daniels that night. So we were fresh. I mean, completely annihilated. And he's sitting here jerking my dog off with his leg. That was my boy, man. Oh, man. Never a dull moment with him. I can remember stopping with him on the road. We're going up to uh, we're going up to a show that he didn't he couldn't even work on because they kicked him out because he was so fucked up. Tom, he was supposed to work with Tom Brandy that night. I don't remember who the promoter was. We were, it was Mount Carmel, PA. We drive all the way from South Philly up there. He's promising me the whole way, yeah, cuz, 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 don't worry about it, cuz. You're on the car, cuz. Yeah, you're working with somebody, cuz, blah, blah, blah. (laughs) Him and his girlfriend, Rachel, are in the back seat. We stop at a Wendy's. They go in and get a bunch of food and a bunch of ketchup packets. They never once had any ketchup on their fries because it was all over the seat of my car. (laughs) We get to the show. We get to the show. He staggers in with his bag. He stops at the door. Let go, let's go of his bag. He keeps walking. Let, leaves the bag there. Walks all the way to the dressing room, looks around, goes, somebody stole my fucking bag. Goes back out, gets his bag, comes back, and he staggers up to the promoter and Tom Brandy, and Tom Brandy stands there going, oh, man, I can't work with him tonight. Come on, look at him, man. Trent goes, what? What? I don't want to work with you either. Shit. Fucking promoter looks at him and goes, you know what, man? I'm gonna have the security guys escort you out. And he looks at me and he goes, you're with him, right? And I said, who me? Uh, yeah. Why? And he goes, you're out of here too. And I said, oh, fuck me, running. <laughs> so you guys was escorted out by the sheriffs. The sheriffs were fucking security the whole way out. Trent's running off at the mouth to them. I don't give a fuck. I'm working anyway. Fuck you guys. Ba ba ba. You fucking marks. Right, man, get in the fucking car before we go to jail. I don't fucking care. Bah, 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 bah. Finally, we get him in the car. I swear to God, he wasn't, he wasn't sitting down two seconds. He was out cold. <laughs> out freaking cold. He gets up. And when we get back to Philly, I get, we, we wake him up, get him out of the car. His whole back, from the back to the bottom of the back of his shirt down to, down to the back of his knees, 
nothing but ketchup. He sat on all the ketchup packets. <laughs> Serves him right for the ketchup that he left on my floor, little shit. <laughs> Oh, I yeah. know that's not where I was supposed to go with that, but no, I that forgot was where brilliant. I was that was absolutely that. brilliant. <laughs> Deal with it. If you don't like it, kiss my ass. <laughs> my trench story. You know, actually, you want to play I, about it? I'll fucking shoot with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm half plastered now too, man, because I've been waiting for this call all day. I got a gallon of Jack here, and sons of bitches fucking empty now. <laughs> so hey, you want to rock? Let's rock, mother. You know, I, I was I was going to end right. that with the last question, but you know, I got one more for you, and uh, it, it sounds like you would be able to answer this best. But who was Trent Acid's heroes and inspirations in life? Oh wow! Um, honestly, I, I don't think he had heroes. I think he had more or less role models that that that, that he based his gimmick off of. And, and in turn lived his life because of, you know, and there was a little bit of Lottie Piper in him. You could see little tinges of Ric Flair with his flamboyancy and his arrogance. Then you could turn around and you could find like Shawn Michaels when he was doing the, the heel heartbreak kid gimmick. And he was, he was a meld of a lot of different guys that he, that he watched growing up. But as far as, that 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 would that would be that would be him working his gimmick. As far as his work, though, mm-hmm. it was it was all Jap influences and, and Mexican lucha lucha influences, man. Because uh, and I'm sure Cashmere could probably back me up on this. He, the kid the kid really studied his tapes. He he really studied the the game. You know, he he was on top of things, and that's that uh, for a young guy getting in the business. That's that's important to do. And he he had his bases covered. I mean, there was never there was never a time that you really saw him fuck something up. You know, it was it was rare that he botched the spot, if at all, because I don't remember him ever botching anything. Yeah. No matter how what kind of condition he was in going in that ring, I, I don't think he ever botched the spot. Hmm. You know, I mean, I could be wrong, but and Cashmere would know better than I would, because right. Cashmere spent a hell of a lot more time in the ring with him. But you know, from from what I saw and from what I knew of him. He was he was just all about wrestling, dude. He he really tried to stay on top of things with it. He studied and and and, and he would imitate people and you know he rib the boys. He just his overall self. And he, you know, honestly, he was he was he was lost a lot of times. You you, you could see it in his eyes that, that he just. He, he was trying to find something that was missing in his life. And I, I think that had a lot to do with him covering it up with, with being the big jokester that he was. Because he he really overdid it a lot. I mean, I'm, I'm not talking like overdid it dangerous or overdid it like he pissed everybody off. I mean, he really tried to overcompensate something that was missing in his life that, that, that only he knew about. And and I, it's maybe maybe Cashmere was was in was in his head far enough to know, but I, I mean I really don't think I was because I, I was right there with him, you know, joking and laughing and having a good time with the kid. I, I really, you know, he really it was really hard for him to bring the walls down and, and let people in, you know, and he's he's definitely an anomaly in this business, man. There's a kind of fucking trip like that. I I am honestly, truly glad and grateful to have known him. He was he was a friend. You okay, bro? Yeah, I'm all right. I'll live. Okay. Thank you very much, Donovan. Uh, your your stories. Um, just the way that you bring Trent to life, you know, um, seeing Trent through your eyes, I think a lot of fans will appreciate uh, hearing what you said about him. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. I, I, I can't really paint the whole picture. You had to really just see him in action, and you had to you had to be with him in the quiet, private times, that it was just like him and a couple of the boys hanging out. You know, that was, that was the real Trent acid. 
that was that was that was the kind of acid that not everybody got to see, because while he didn't have the walls up, he was still a very very real person with everybody, and you know he he was a kind of like it is kind of guy, and whether you liked it or not, he was going to say it, because he didn't really give a fuck about consequences. He knew his best had his back if he couldn't hold his own, so you know. That was kind of nutshell, man. Big time. I'm just glad I know him. All right, we are live back on the Trent tribute. Wow, that you know, Dave is such a great guy. And did you hear the stories, man? Yeah, yeah, I did. You know, I mean, it's it was hard not to be touched. Um, actually, listening to him because uh, uh, he was pretty sad towards the end of it. You know, and I mean, as funny as some of the stories were that he brought up, you could definitely tell that he was choking choking back some uh, uh, motion yeah now um I, I wanted to follow it up uh by another one but i want to talk a little bit first uh we were supposed to have eric Gargiulo on but eric uh just said he wasn't going to be able to do it for some reason it, it seems like one of the the things you're going to hear a lot tonight and I, it's really funny is trent loved to use the word mark <laughs> yeah uh, not just mark it was like <laughs> mark mark i i can't do it you know <laughs> I mean, it, it, I, <laughs> I can't either. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's definitely trademarked by uh, Tread Acid for sure. But uh, yeah, he just liked having fun with it. I I think that was just amusing. Just the word itself and all its insinuations. I think he just found it hilarious. Yeah, I agree. Now, w- one thing a lot of people didn't know is you know, Trent, of course, working for JCW, they had him as uh, the unholy Trent Acid for a while, or the holy Trent Acid, and uh, that was one thing. Did you know that he did not like doing that? Really? I didn't know that. I mean, I know he did it for a while. I mean, he used the Bible as a foreign weapon, a foreign object, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, <laughs> it was it was a, a pretty popular character of his. I, I actually didn't know that he didn't enjoy doing that, though. That's, that's news to me. Yeah, he did not enjoy that. But uh, let's go ahead and let's get to our next one, and you will be hearing from ECW original Pitbull Gary Wolf. All right, on the line with us, we have ECW original Pitbull number one, Gary Wolf. Gary, of course, you were the, uh, you know, you were one of the trainers of Trent. What do you think Trent wants his fans to remember most about him? Uh, you gotta remember, I mean, I don't know if you guys know, but, uh, I knew Trent, Billy, Johnny. I mean, so all them guys, I knew them since they were like 13 years old. So, I mean, I, I helped train Trent. Uh, Bret Hart took him under his wing, and he li- he liked him a lot. I mean, and for him, for Bret to like say come and train my son, I mean, that what does that tell you, you know? And uh, Trent always, I don't care what condition he was in, uh, even though it wasn't up to my standards. Sometimes his condition wasn't good, but he would still give 150 percent in the ring every single time. So you would say that his uh, determination and his skills in the ring would probably be the most that sticks out to you? Yeah, and uh, he's one of the first wrestlers I've ever seen actually go around the ring and get dollar bills from girls, which <laughs> I've never seen that before. And and he would he'd actually come back to the, re- uh, to the dressing room with more money in his pocket from the fans than from what he's getting paid from the promoter. So. <laughs> That's awesome. Of course, Trent, the originator of the dollar bill gimmick. Now, if you were to uh, write a book about Trent's life, what would the title be? Uh, acid. <laughs> just acid, Trent Acid. I mean, just saying the name, you know what you're getting. I mean, uh it's just hard for me because, like I said, I've known him a long time, and he, he only died at 29 years old, and it was very young. And, uh, I'm still, like, coming off of the view of the funeral, still in shock because uh, I, this is the second go-around for me. I had to bury my partner, and now I buried one of my students who actually was, I mean, Trent was actually one of my trainers at my wrestling school. So when I lived in Australia for six months, I mean, I was able to trust Trent and Billy and Kashmir to to run the school for me because we, me and my partner were in Australia for six months. So I mean, uh, I mean, we were and he trained. I mean, he was he wasn't like a, he wasn't a stingy person or a, a 
talent to get a word. Uh, I mean, he would go out of his way for people. I mean, sometimes you'd have, like, young kids, like 14, 15, 16, just to get them off the streets. Their parents would send them to the wrestling school. And Trent would put the time in and train them. I mean, which most people wouldn't have the, you know, the patience to do that, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, um, my co-host, Missionary, has a couple questions. So, Missionary, go ahead. Hey, Gary. Um... One of the questions I had actually was, you know, Trent Acid's crowning achievement or his crowning moment in his career, in your opinion. Well, uh, well, I don't know if I, I think I cut, I think you cut off at the end of it. But, uh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I said, um, what is Trent Acid's crowning achievement or moment in his career, in your opinion? Well, what made me very proud of my students was when they made it to Japan. Because most guys out there have never even been to Japan, not, not only overseas, but to go fight in Corrigan Hall and have my students sign their names on the wall underneath me and my partner's name. You know, when I go back, when I went back in 2001 and I, and I seen all my students that have been there from White Peter the Cashmere, the Trent, you know, and other guys, you know, they all signed their name underneath us because they came from the animal house. And uh, I was very proud about that, you know, because at least, you know, some of my students did make it to Japan. We may not have made it to WWF. I mean, they've done work for them, but what, what, our, what me and my partner's goal was always to go overseas and, and go to another continent, you know, country and, and wrestle and be superstars in another country besides America, you know. Yeah. And over there, he was he was they loved they loved him. I mean, he was he was over, man. He was over. Who was uh, Trent Acid's heroes and inspirations in life? I'm sure Bret Hart was one of them. Uh, he, uh, like I said, uh, he he worked. He tried to have his own style, which I liked. You know, like some wrestlers go out there and they try to like mimic another wrestler. Where Trent was himself. You know, when you get Trent Acid, you got Trent Acid. That's it. Period. Hmm. Um, what was Trent's biggest goal in life? Uh, I remember I was in Australia, and I remember at the time uh, I was married, and my ex-wife had called me instead of. Trent made it to Japan. Uh, his aunt just came by and was, you know, because she was worried because he's never been there before. And like they were asking, they wanted to ask me questions, but at the time I was overseas anyway. So, but it was it made me really happy knowing that he he got to go to Japan, he got to travel the world, and, and you know he got to do stuff that other people wouldn't have done. You know, right, right. And in your obviously to you, Gary. Um, What's the one thing about Trent Acid you personally will miss? Oh, his laugh. Uh, it was always funny. I mean, like, I remember one time uh, he had to watch uh, my partner's dog, and uh, we, we came home, and next thing you know, the dogs were stuck together. Hmm. And uh, Trent would just, you know, Billy and would just point to Trent and be like, this will, you know, and it was just... <laughs> he would take the heat, and he was cool about it, and it was just, it was funny. I mean, I remember, I, I knew these kids, like, so long, I, I would take them to strip, like, the strip bars with me. Huh. And I remember uh, this one girl wanted to hook up with Trent, and I had to pull her aside, and I was like, you know, look, you know, if you're going to take him out, act the club closes, I want to know where you're going, and you got to have him home at a certain time. And it was like, that was being like his dad. It was funny, you know, because I did that with all my boys, all my students, you know. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for sharing those stories, Gary. Gary, thank you very much for joining us and sharing those stories. I appreciate it. And everybody out there, uh, if you've never seen Trent work, please go on the computer and look up his matches because uh, I'm sure and I'm pretty positive that you will be entertained. And I wanted to address a couple of the things in the chat room, you know. I mean, um, guys like Reels were talking about uh, uh, some of the matches that Trent Acid had. I mean, Trent Acid wrestled some of the best in wrestling. I mean, 
you, you can go down from Sabu to Balls Mahoney to Chris Candido, Jack Evans, Teddy Hart, et cetera, et cetera. He just, he really did, he really was the creme de la creme when it came to wrestler status. I mean, over 18 tag team title victories. Uh, uh, I mean, just just countless different titles that he, he got big from Japan everything. Jun- yeah, Big Japan, the, the Big ROH. Japan Junior Heavyweight. Right. I mean, just just everything. He's, he literally was so decorated. It, it's just absolutely insane. But I guess we wanted to go on to Very true. The, the next interview, which is Missy Sampson. Yeah, actually, we're going to cut into the Missy Sampson one, and uh, after that, we'll come back and talk a little bit more about Trent and open the phone lines to anybody who wants to share memories. The phone line number is 347-994-2320. All right, we are here on the Trent Acid Tribute Radio Show, and on the line with us, we have Missy Sampson. Missy, how are you doing? I'm doing okay today. How are you guys doing? Well, you know, uh, you know, we've been saying this a lot, but I wish we could be speaking on different terms. Uh, of course, you know, we are here not to mourn the loss of Trent, but to more celebrate the life that was Trent Acid, or Michael Verdi, as uh, some may know him. And uh, we have a couple of questions for you, if you don't mind. We'll go ahead and get started. Absolutely. Go, go ahead. What do you think, you know, and of course you were Trent's friend, so what do you think Trent wants his fans to remember him most for? Um... I think Trent would probably want his fans to remember him most as somebody who was so full of life, had a tremendous sense of humor, and and a work ethic in the ring that is probably hard to find in most other people. You know, he's somebody who always went out there, no matter what he had going on in his life, he always went to the ring and tried to give, you know, 150% to the fans the paid for tickets, you know, he, he was always of a philosophy where he didn't care if there were 500 people in the building or five people in the building, you know, he, he always went out there and put the same work ethic into every match that he had. And, and I think that's what he'd like the fans to remember. That, that's a good thing, you know, for fans to remember him by. He went out there and killed it, like you said, you know, he would go out there and give it his all, whether it was his body or everything he had, you know, physically. Um, my next question for you is what stuck out to you most about Trent? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> are we talking about Trent or are we talking about Mike Burry? <laughs> uh, how about both? How about info during and personally, being that you knew them both? Okay. Um, you know, I, again, what what would stick out to me is, is his work ethic. Um, you know, here's a guy who legitimately valued every fan in the building and, and the money that they had paid to come see, you know, him, him and everybody else perform. Uh, you know, he was always very aware of the fact that, you know, especially lately with the economic times that we're having, you know, that this was people's, you know, hard-earned money that they were spending to come, you know, not just be entertained, but support us in doing what we love to do. And he was always very conscious of that. And he would always say, you know, you, you have to do it so that the fans in the back can see it too, because, you know, those fans paid, you know, their good, you know, their good money, just like everybody else. Um, so professionally, again, it would probably be his work ethic. Um, that sticks out to me the most. Um, personally, I would say what sticks out to me the most um, was Mike Verdi was a viciously loyal friend. Um, you know, I, I, I've been getting thanked a lot recently for quote unquote everything I did for him. People don't understand that, you know, I got back in friendship a lot from Mike. Um, you know, last August when my dad died. He was the first person I called when I left the hospital. My dad had passed, and he literally dropped everything he was doing, and he was living with me at the time, but he was not home. You know, dropped everything he was doing and came home um, to be with me um, and literally didn't leave my side for about 24 hours. Literally would not let me go anywhere without him um, to make sure that he was here for me. Um, in December, when I had to have heart surgery, um, you know, he woke up early and came to the hospital with me. Um, you know, was there right before I went into surgery and literally was the first person I saw when I woke up in recovery. He was sitting next to my bed, holding my hand, rubbing my arm, telling me I was going to be okay. You know, so, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, for, for all the funny stories we can tell, you know, there was a real genuine person behind the character or the name that you see put out there. Now, if you were to write a book about the life of Trent Astor or Michael Verdi, what would you call the title? 
<laughs> which is funny. <laughs> me and Johnny were talking about this the other day. That you know, between me and and him and and Nick Burke, we probably could write, um, you know, Trent's autobiography. <laughs> God, what would I call it? <laughs> um, <laughs> like I have so many like all I can think of at the moment is like so many um little funny like one liner little quotes that were that were his. You know, like uh, we could probably call it Lee's the ship. Um, I don't. Well, can we curse on here? Yes, you can. Oh, okay, good. Whew. Um, <laughs> we could probably, you know, call it "Let Me Find Out." I mean, he he used to have like these little random quote things that would just the middle of nowhere. He'd come up with something out of his, you know, out of nowhere. So, you know, for I would have to wow. I would really have to put some thought into that. Into what we'd call the autobiography of Trent Asset. Hmm. <laughs> now. Um... My co-host, who is on the line with the missionary, has a couple questions, so I'm going to let missionary go ahead. Sure. Hey, Missy. Um, Hi, missionary. Ah, I'm, I'm hanging in there. Um, okay. Trent Acid's uh, uh, crowning achievement or his crowning moment in his career, in your opinion. Oh, Jesus. Um, oh. <laughs> Didn't mean to stop yeah. you there. Jesus. God, you... Next time I'm doing an interview with you guys, you guys have to send me the questions ahead of time. <laughs> um, yeah, I feel, like these are great questions, and I just feel like I'm unprepared to answer them. Um, I, if I had to pick one, I, you know, I would say probably any one of his multiple trips to Japan. Um, you know, I, I know he was really proud of that. Um, he, he actually won and retired. Uh, the big Japan, I think it's Cruiser Raid or Junior Heavyweight title belt. Right. Um, and as a matter of fact, technically he still owns the belt. He did, in fact, give it to his little brother. Um, you know, and, and I know he was always so proud, um, that he was able to not only keep the belt, but give it to his little brother. Um, so, you, you know, so I'd probably say that's his crowning achievement, only because I know how much it meant to him. Right. Um, to be able to give that belt to his little brother. And I know how much it, I know how much it means. Me and his little brother were talking about it, um, Wednesday, um, at his wake. You know, so I, I know how much it meant for him to be able to give that to his little brother. And I know how much today, how much it means to his little brother to have it. So I would probably say that. What was Trent's biggest goal in life? Trent's, Trent's biggest goal in life, um, was I know he wanted to get um, he plays music, he used to play music, well, it's so hard for me to speak of him in past tense. Right. Um, but, you know, he had a, a childhood friend that he grew up with by the name of George. Um, they had started a band called, uh, Human Slate. Um, and I know that, you know, recently, you know, uh, in the past year and a half, he really wanted to dedicate himself to his music. I mean, I can understand that most people here have not heard him play mm -hmm. or have not read or heard any of the songs that he wrote. Um, I, on the other half, was blessed for both. Um, you know, he wrote a lot while he lived here, and he would always, you know, let me read everything that he wrote, and, you know, where I'd come home from work, and he'd be jamming by himself in the living room on his guitar. Um, I know his music was very important to him, and really, I'd say his life goal was, you know, he wanted to actually get signed to a label, um, and produce music and go on the road. You know, that was his, that was his big ultimate dream. Hmm. What kind of music did he play just out of curiosity? Cause we've already heard some people say that he was like influenced by Pearl Jam and stuff like that, but I'm just kind of mm -hmm. curious. Yeah. Pearl Jam, Pearl Jam was his favorite band. Um, he would play rock. I mean, he would play rock and roll stuff. Hmm. Uh, you know, stuff that was influenced by people like, you know, Pearl Jam or the Ramones, um, you know, things like that. Right. So that's what he would play. Hmm. Huh. What's the uh, what's the one thing about Michael Verdi you'll miss? Uh, say, oh, you guys are gonna make me cry, answer this. I'm sorry. Um, everything. I'm gonna miss everything. I um, you know, here's somebody for the past year and a half. Sorry. Here's somebody that for the past year and a half was almost a daily part of my life. You know, even when he got, even when he got arrested this last time and when he went to rehab this last time, he would call me almost every day. Like here's somebody I spoke to all, you know, even when he, you know, he wasn't living with me. This is somebody I spoke to almost every day. You know, this is somebody who 
I've become ingrained so much in my everyday life. I'm going to miss everything. You know, I said to his sister the other day, my, when Mike lived with me, and actually come think about it even when he didn't, you know, it'd be the stupid little things like he'd get stuck somewhere and have to call and ask me to come get him. Hmm. And I said to his sister the other day, you know, I, I, I'd give anything for him to just call me and tell me he's stuck somewhere and I have to come get him. Hmm. So that's what I'm going to miss most. I'm going to miss everything. Thank you, Missy. Thank you. I want to thank you for coming on and, you know, taking your time out to share some memories of Trent with our fans. Well, thank you for having me. You know, and again, I want to, you know, I just want to really quick take this opportunity to thank, uh, you know, his fans and his friends um, and everybody who is, you know, signed on to come to Asset Fest July 10th at the arena, uh, Bell Times 2.30. Um, you know, everyone who has, you know, made really nice graphics um, in regards to him, has written really wonderful things about him you know, has, has been there as much as they possibly can to try and support, you know, myself and Johnny, Nick, the rest of, you know, Homicide, the rest of his close friends. Um, you know, like I said before, you know, we can't, sometimes we can't answer everybody. Right. We all have a lot going on with us right now, but we are reading what you're writing. We see the pictures, you know, we've watched the videos that you've made, um, you know, and, and it, they're actually really wonderful, beautiful things. Um, so I just wanted to take the opportunity to thank everybody for that. And we thank you. No. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks, guys. All right, you have just heard from Missy Sampson. Man, you know, I can't plug this enough. Acid Fest, of course, is coming up July 10th, 2.30 bell time. You know, she talked about it a little bit during the interview. I mean, there's a lot of great talent on the card. Um, even if you can't make it to the event, you can still donate. Um, currently, you can hit up Johnny Cashmere on his Facebook uh, for an address to send a donation to the family. Of course, all the money is going to the family for the funeral costs. Uh, is there anything else you wanted to plug there, Missionary? Not just plug, but I wanted to talk about something. I mean, I, I got a couple of questions already about uh, why did we use the questions we used. And um, it, it, you will notice that there is a pattern as as you listen on for the questions that we chose. But, you know, honestly, when, uh, I mean, you wrote down your questions and I wrote down my questions, and these were what we felt would give people, I mean, even people that don't know Trent Acid at all, you know, may not be, you know, fans of his or just may not know and are, and are just maybe now discovering him you know th this was these were the best questions to give people insight you know from the people who knew him best his friends his family his his brothers you know and and, and sisters um into the insight and in, in, into the mind of uh, of Trent Acid, you know. I mean, uh, that's that's kind of why we chose it. Yeah, of course. Uh, our next one is going to be Matt Walsh, but I did want to touch down. You know, I'm I'm glad that somebody actually asked that because you know I, I've been getting the same questions on my Facebook as the questions that we have chose for our guests. And, and honestly, in my opinion, it's what you know the guests felt comfortable. We didn't want to push too hard. You know, we wanted to, to give them the opening to share what they wanted right. to share. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we definitely you know i mean see there's just just in general you know i mean this isn't this is a celebration of trent's life we want people to know and, and ourselves i mean I, I learned a lot from doing these interviews but i mean we want to celebrate his life and what he meant to people you know this isn't this isn't a dark cloud you know this is this is a celebration of everything that he's provided and and the amount of joy and experience that he's given so many people over the years. Exactly. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to the next one, which is Matt Walsh, and we'll be back right after that. All right, we're here on the Trent Acid Tribute Radio Show, and on the line with us we have Matt Walsh. Matt, how are you doing? I'm all right. How are you doing? I uh, could be doing better, of course. You know, uh, we're here talking about Trent Acid or Michael Verdi, and uh, we've got a few questions for you. So if you don't mind, let's go ahead and get started. What do you think Trent wants his fans to remember most about him? You know, I think, obviously, uh, you know, his work in the ring, I think he always, he always, uh, every time he went out there, you know, he stole the show. And, uh, you know, it didn't matter how many people were there. And, uh, yeah, it sounds kind of cliche, but he really was, you know, from talking to him, you know, before and after shows and seeing him, it, it didn't matter. He was, uh, all he cared was that, you know, he put on the best match of the night. 
you know, it seems to be uh, something we've been told a lot, and you know, it shows throughout a lot of his footage. Um, do you have a memory or a story about Trent that you'd like to share with our listeners? No, I don't have like a specific story. Uh, the thing I, yeah, I want to say about Trent is just how much uh, he went out of his way to help me. Um, you know, I uh, when I was released from WWE, I was still you know relatively green. You know, just having a few matches under my belt. And he was just so, um, I mean, he'd go up with me and train. He would, you know, he'd take me to shows. He just, he wanted to help me so bad. And he told me, you know, he, uh, you know, if I could make it again, you know, that would even be good enough for him. If he just, uh, if he could help me, um, you know, he just, he was really, uh, you know, really helpful, helpful guy. And, uh, you know, I think that's something that, uh, you know, people should know about. What would you say stuck out most to you about Trent? You know, he just had that, you know, the it factor, as they call it, or whatever. He, uh, the intangible. Um, you know, it's not, it's not one thing you can pick apart. He, uh, you know, he, he walks through an airport or, you know, the mall or whatever. People are going to be looking at him. He, uh, one of a kind. And, uh, you know, in terms of his personality, and he just, he had that presence about him. If you were to write a book about Trent's life, what would the title be? I would, uh, you know, just uh, probably something along the lines of maybe Undiscovered. It's hmm. a good title. Um, my co-host, Missionary, has a couple questions. So, Missionary, go ahead, man. Yeah, hey, Matt. Uh, I was actually kind of curious. Um, what do you think, in, I mean, in your opinion, of course, what do you think is uh, Trent Acid's crowning achievement in his career? Uh, in terms of his achievement, just from talking to him, he uh, not like one... One, one run he had per se when when him and Johnny you know the backseat boys when they were you know had their, their run they were on top mm-hmm. he just he looked back on that period of his life with, with such fondness so I don't think um, you know it, it, it you know he, he would look back at it in terms of you know a match he had a title he held you know a cup or something like that I think just the run he had with Johnny when they were on top they are doing shows every night you know yeah. um you know, making some money, traveling the world. That was, uh, that was it for him. Hmm. Oh, very good. Do you know what Trent's biggest goal in life was? His biggest goal? Um, you know, he wanted to make a living wrestling. Uh, like I said, he, he was happy with how him and Johnny were, uh, you know, a, a few years ago. He was able to support himself wrestling. He didn't have to be, you know, John Cena or The Rock or Hulk Hogan or anything like that. He, he loved wrestling, and uh, he was happy just just making a living doing it. And uh, he wanted to uh, he wanted to get back to doing that. So yeah. um, that that was his goal. And you have to really uh, admire somebody like that, especially with you know his his amount of talent in the ring. I mean, he he could have easily uh, you know wanted to be the big star or you know been been, been bitter that he wasn't. But he didn't care. He loved wrestling, and he just uh, you know that's that's what he wanted. On, on a personal note, what's the one thing about Trent you'll miss? You know, just like you know, sense of humor. Um, when he was when he was in the car, uh, times we had a good shows and stuff like that. He really added something. Um, you know, a lot of times we go, me and Johnny, uh, Joe Tell, um, yeah, you know, we travel with, and uh, he just had such a unique sense of humor, such a great energy. Um, yeah, so if, you know, a lot of times I, I, uh, he would calm my nerves before a match if I was nervous, maybe in, uh, in the beginning, uh, just with his, you know, his, his, his warmness and, and all that, so. Yeah. It, yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Matt. Now, um, if I'm not mistaken, you're going to be a part of Acid Fest on July 10th. Uh, what can fans expect from this event? You know, it's just going to be a tribute to Trent, and, uh, Along that, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the, his, his old, uh, you know, the guys, uh, he used to work with, uh, are going to be there paying tribute. And obviously everyone's going to, you know, be up in their game because, uh, you know, in honor of Trent, you know, he would be doing that. So I think it's going to be a real good show, um, for the fans. It's going to be a good show to be part of. And, uh, you know, it should be, a, should be a good turnout. So we can, you know, I think it'll be one for the, uh, one for the books. It should be, should be worth, what's coming out for i agree and uh for the fans that want to come to the event or for the fans that can't come to the event but still want to donate they can donate at acidmemorialaol.com if i'm not mistaken yep 
Uh, and uh, the proceeds from that will go to uh, to uh, visit the family of Trent and uh, all the funeral costs, which were last week. So you know, it's a good call too. So definitely, uh, you know, would you know would, would want as many people come out as uh, as can in in uh, in honor of Trent. I'd like to thank you for uh, you know for joining us and for doing this for Trent. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Thank you, thank you very much. Very much. All right, we're back here on the Trent Acid Tribute Radio Show. Of course, this is presented by False Count Radio and the Wrestling Soup, which can be heard on wrestling-news.com. Still to come on the broadcast, we're going to hear from Primetime Amy Lee, DJ Hyde, the Pretty Hate Machine, Jason Gotti, Billy Real, and Johnny Cashmere. And stay tuned, folks. Also, you're going to hear a funnier side of Trent Acid as you will be uh, listening to a voicemail that he left on Billy Real's phone. Um, so I wanted to plug that and, of course, uh, let you guys know that those people are coming up. And, uh, you know, can't stop plugging Acid Fest. It's going to be a huge event, wouldn't you say? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I mean, people have probably already heard it a couple times by now, but uh, we're just really trying to get the word out there. I, I know that there's a lot of people that actually care or just even enjoy good indie wrestling. And, I mean, you couldn't support a better cause right now, so... I agree, and of course we're leaving the lines open, so if anybody in the chat has a memory of Trent that they would like to share, they can call in at 347-994-2320. Got to plug that again, that's 347-994-2320. But at this time we're going to go ahead and go to a uh, recording from Primetime Amy Lee. Go ahead, missionary. All right, we are here on the Trent Acid Tribute Radio Show, and on the line with us we have Primetime Amy Lee. Amy, how are you doing? Tremendous. How are you guys doing? You know, could be doing a lot better, of course. Uh, we're here not, you know, to mourn, but we are here to celebrate the life that was Michael Verdi. And with that being said, we have a couple of questions to ask you, being that you knew uh, Trent or Michael very well. Um, my first question I actually wanted to ask you was, what do you feel Trent wants his fans to remember most about him? Um, that he was dedicated a, a billion percent, not a thousand, not a million, a billion percent to his wrestling. I mean, you know, uh, his res- wrestling was all he knew. I mean, he had no trade. He had no real education. The only education he had was professional wrestling. And I think that, you know, I, I know from my experiences watching him in the ring, he gave a, he gave a billion percent every time. He, he never cheated the fans. They, they never walked away and said, wow, Trent was off tonight, or wow, Trent robbed us in that match, or no, oh, Trent wasn't too good tonight. If anything, they were like, wow, he shocked me. Did you see what he did? He always wanted to up himself one more. And he just got better and better and better and better as the years went on. So would you say that's what stuck out most to you about Trent is that he always tried to uh, top his last match? Yeah, you know, I met. it's funny. I met Trent when he was just a teenager, and it was him and Johnny Cashmere, Nick Berg, Z-Bar, and um, Billy Real all worked out under the pit bulls, Gary Wolf and Anthony. And, um, you know, I walked in there one time, and so I saw Trent jumping around like a monkey, and I said something to Gary, I was like, who the hell's this kid, and where'd you find him? And he said, oh, you know, Billy Real brought him down one day and said he wanted to do pro wrestling. He loved it. He said, kid's good. He's got a lot of talent, a lot of raw, raw talent. I said, you're not kidding. I said, he's doing stuff that, you know, guys do three, four years into their career. They get brave to do. He, he, he was, he was, um, he wasn't reckless in the ring. He was more like fearless in the ring. He was never afraid to get hurt. He was never afraid to jump around. He was always the first one to jump off the top of the cage or swing off a rope or, you know, go through a table. He never had a problem with any of that. And I, and I think that's what made him so successful is he really didn't fear anything. He wasn't afraid of anything. He wasn't afraid of getting hurt. He wasn't afraid of, 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 um, dying basically. He just, you know, he kind of looked at fear and kind of laughed at it and said, Psh. Take me if you can. Take your best shot at me. And I think that's what, what made him very successful is, you know, some of us, we like to wrestle safe. We, you know, we have real jobs. We have families. On. Trent didn't have all that. Trent just had Trent. What you see is what you got. He wasn't a fancy guy. He didn't have cars. He didn't have, you know, oodles and oodles of money or anything like that. But he had a very strong fan base, which is a rarity. I mean, you know, we all have wrestlers we like and all. But, I mean, he was one of the guys that, his fan base, every time he wrestled, just got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And if you ever watch a, a, a DVD that he's on, you could just, as soon as his music would play and he would come out, the place just exploded. And to me, that's magic, and that's, that's a rarity because so many people wrestle for many, many years and try to accomplish that. And Trent, Trent did it without blinking an eye. 
I would have to agree with you. I've seen many of Trent's matches. Of course, he is the originator of the dollar bill gimmick. But um, yeah, it, if you I'll tell you what. Let me tell you about that dollar. Let me tell you those women. I I witnessed it for myself. Those women. They weren't throwing dollar bills down his pants. They were throwing twenty dollar bills, hundred dollar bills. That's how close they wanted to get to him. That's how infatuated the women wrestling fan base was infatuated with him. They they craved him. I mean, he made them ooze. He made their knees knock and everything. And and he didn't do anything spectacular in the sense of the way he, he wasn't a Casanova with them all. He just was nice. He he was not a vicious. He was not vicious at all. He was a generally nice person who had demons. We all have demons. Unfortunately, he lost the, the the battle with his demon. It eventually got the better of him. You know, I mean, even with all his demons and his problems and his worries, and, and he never missed a beat in the ring. He never, he never ever let that affect his wrestling. If anything. When he had his legal issues and went away for a while, he was upset that he was going to miss dates because he was one of those ones that didn't want to miss a date. He, he, he loved it so much that, you know, it, it was almost like an addiction for him. It's, it's a shame. I mean, he's such great talent. Such a great talent. I, I mean, I can't emphasize it enough. And, and the women, I just watched them. They just, they fall all over him. And, and he just was, uh, and he didn't do anything. Like, he didn't say, oh, you're the most gorgeous woman in the world or, he didn't BS him or nothing. He was like the Pied Piper of Punani and the rest of us. Like, all these women wanted him, and he never took them up on it. He was just like, yeah, okay. You know? He was just like, whatever. <laughs> I, I always said Trent's girlfriend, mistress, and wife was pro wrestling. That's the God's honest truth. He was married to pro wrestling. I mean, if you think about it, if you ever seen him at a show or anything, he, he never, he never came in with, you know, a bunch of girls, you know, or anything like that. He, but I'll tell you what, he had the offers. Even, even the guys, oh, Trent, I'll drive you to a show. Trent, just, just to be in the same car with you, I'll drive you to a show. People, people constantly, constantly were at his beck and call. And, and he never, you know, and he honestly never took advantage of it. Never took advantage of it. Never. If you were to write a book about Trent's life, what would you call the title? I would call it the acid test. Because he always pushed that envelope, whether it was in his personal life or whether it was in wrestling, he always pushed the envelope. Okay, and he and you know he, he was always playing with with acid and you know mixing it and doing crazy things and you know between the the, the drugs and the crazy moves he would do and you know there there'd be days on end. I mean, he would do tours and not even sleep and and stuff like that. I mean, he always. Try to go one step. For, how far? How far can I go this time? You know, it's like it's like somebody with a big, big, big leaky tank of acid, and he's running with it. He's doing a marathon, and he wants to see how much he can carry before he gets burned. Hmm. And he's going a long time, and unfortunately, he got burned. And it's a shame. It is a shame. I would have to agree with you. My co-host missionary has a few questions for you. So missionary, go ahead, man. <clears throat> I wanted to know, sure. in your opinion. What was uh, Trent Acid's mm -hmm. crowning achievement or moment in his career? Well, it's a, you know what? I, I think the fact I, – I can't personally name every one of his matches. I'm not – I wasn't – I was like – how do I put it? I was like a mommy figure to him <laughs> when we were at shows, you know? Like, I was like a big sister or like a mommy type thing. And, you know, anytime I saw him, he always went out of his way to speak. And, I mean, I knew him since he was, you know, what we would call a pup. So, I mean, like, someone like Missy would, would better know his career in that aspect of his life. I know he was very proud when he was very young and went over to Japan. He was all excited about that, and he was successful. A lot of guys go to Japan, they get their asses handed to them, they come back with their tails between their legs. Right. Not him. He survived. Yeah. He survived it. He was, he was, he was, you know, he, he's done, he's done cuffs and gauges. He's done, I mean, he's done so much stuff that, you know, <laughs> to list it all, it would take another whole show, you know. So I think, the one thing with Trent, I think um, his greatest accomplishment was every time he went out there, he got better and better. You know, speaking of the, uh, of the accomplishment, what do you think Trent's biggest goal in life was? To be the best he could be in the ring. I honestly do. I think, I, I, like I said, wrestling was his mistress, his girlfriend, his wife, his, his companion. You know, you took that away from him. You, you took, you took, there was no Trent acid. You know, if you, if tomorrow, if he, Trent was alive today and the doctor said, Trent, you can't wrestle or you'll die. He'll say, oh, well, I guess I'm dying because I'm wrestling. <laughs> I mean, that's how addicted he was to it. Right. And, um, 
I mean, it, it, it breaks my heart. I mean, I went to the funeral and all, and there was a, such a great turnout to pay respect to him from, you know, like Todd Gordon was there and Bob Ortiz, um, and of course, Cashmere and Missy Sanson, Nick Berg, Z Bar, Billy Real, Gary Wolf was there. I mean, there was guys that traveled from New York that worked shows with him. Guys, you know, from down south that came up to, to pay their, their homage or respect to him. And then when they offered this Trent Acid Memorial show, I mean, Johnny Cashmere, Missy Shanzer were just overwhelmed with the contacts. I want to work it. I want to work it. I want to work it. Trent was the kind of guy that he was, he, he, like I said before, what you see is what you got. Mm -hmm. He wasn't fake. He wasn't phony. You know, hey, he's come to the shows with, with, with his demon flashing in front of him. He was high and stuff like that. We're not going to sugarcoat any of this, you know. Um, but he, high, straight, whatever. The man, the man just, he knew the ring. The ring was his house. He owned it. And without a doubt, I just, for me, I find that a shame that such a talent did not get the opportunity to be on TV, a pay-per-view where millions, billions, or trillions could see him wrestle. You know, that, that, that to me was very heartbreaking because that was one guy I always thought should have been up on one of the top leagues. Not a TNA. I thought he was too good for TNA. I always thought he was WWE status. Hmm. I always did. I always, you know what? Before the Hardy Boys, there was Trent Acid and Johnny Cashmere. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, the Hardy Boys came around. But Trent and Johnny were doing that shit when they were pups. Right. So they were even doing that stuff when they were, like, 12 years old. So, you know, like, I always say the Hardy Boys copied off the backseat, not the backseat off the Hardy Boys. <laughs> so everything you see the Hardy Boys, the, those boys do when they, when they were just hitting puberty. Yeah. You know? So. Who was some of Trent Acid's heroes, or who do you think his inspiration in life was? Um, You know what? As for that, like I said, I didn't... I never like got super super in depth conversations that way with okay. him, but I think uh, well, what, what I can ring? say about Trent is he respected those that would go into the ring and give a thousand percent. Anybody that went out there just to put themselves over, he always said something to him. He never hesitated to open his mouth. And you know, I had the privilege of wrestling him, and uh, he made me. I mean, it was like Ric Flair putting over Frankie Williams. To be honest <laughs> with you, I mean, we're two different caliber of workers and everything. You know, I mean, he's a phenomenal wrestler. I'm more of a brawler. And he did. He made me look like a billion dollars. He could take a guy that just learned how to bump and make him look like Ric Flair. And that is a God-given talent. That is not something you learn. That is something you're born with. And that's something a Trent had. And, you know, like, inspiration-wise, I think if he saw a move or he saw a match he liked, he would pick what he liked from that match and he would incorporate it into his style. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, there's times where... You know, like Ring of Honor said to him, oh, you got to be more like CM Punk. He's like, yeah, but you booked Trent Acid. You didn't book CM Punk. Right. Well, we want you more like CM Do you want CM Punk or do you want Trent Acid? That was his question. And I have to agree with him. Are you booking Trent Acid or are you booking CM Punk? If you're booking CM Punk, book CM Punk. If you're booking Trent Acid, you're booking Trent Acid. You know, Absolutely. don't ask Trent Acid to become someone he's not. And don't ask someone to become Trent Acid because they're not. Yeah. There's only one Trent Acid. What's the... um? And, and 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 not just just not just on a personal level, but what's the one thing about Trent you'll miss? Me, honestly, walking into the locker room and seeing that big ass smile of his, drop his bag and give me the biggest hug ever. And he always, always, always watched out for the women wrestlers on the show to get your pay. Who's giving you anybody giving you a hard time? Come sit with me. Yo, yo, they're giving me, oh, don't, don't get your hands dirty. I'll take care of it. Like he was one, he was very, very loyal. And I, I can't, I, it, it's funny because you always hear people with drug habits or nasty liars, thieves, cheats, scumbags. To me, he wasn't that. I never saw that side of him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he was always very good hearted, always appreciative, always respectful, you know, so it was, it was kind of like, it, it was weird. It was, it was, he wasn't, he wasn't your, typical substance abuse person. He he was, you know, he was generally, he was not malicious. He was not vicious. He didn't steal. I never, I mean, I've been in locker rooms. I handled my purse. I had him. One time I, I came, I was going to a WEW show. He came by because Missy was running the locker room. And Missy Sampson, he came by and I was like, shit. I was like, I got to go out. I go, I need somebody to watch my purse. He goes, what do you need, mommy? I said, here, this is my pay envelope. This is all the money I got. He stood right there where I left him and I came back and boom, there it was. Hmm. Those guys would have ran and said, fuck her, stupid bitch. 
I, I, I personally never had a problem with him. Never was disrespectful. Never raised his voice. Never yelled at me. Never was nasty to me. I mean, he. I mean, he, he was a gentleman. It's funny. He was. He was generally a gentleman. I, I, I always said, like him and Cashmere and Nick Burke and Zebra, they were never nasty to me. They were never rude. They were never disrespectful. They always treated me with the utmost respect, and they always treated me as one of theirs. I was part of their clique, and I always appreciated that. You know. Because sometimes you're in a strange locker room working for a new promotion. You don't know anybody but maybe one person. And that one person's like, baby, I'm sweet and you're on your own. I'm not, not him. He was like, come with me. Nice. No, this is my girl. He would always, he would always like, like a dog peeing on a tree. This is my girl right here. This is my girl. And I said, no, I'll miss, I'll miss those entrances of his and, you know, his high flying moves and, you know, his little, little gestures and little facials in the ring. I mean, I mean he was all around package. I mean, he, he had a good build to him for his size. He had charisma. He, you know, he could wrestle, and he was a crowd pleaser, yeah. good or bad. The crowd loved him. You know. Thank you very much, Amy. Mm-hmm. Now, are you going to be a part of uh, Acid Fest coming up? I am. It's going to be any social who Trent and I trained with. Trained, actually. Um, I had showed her more of the charisma selling. He showed her more of the technical things. Um, Missy Sampson and myself, we're trying, and we're going against Roxy Conton, um, who also Trent helped out a lot. Um, Alir Littlefeather, who is someone he worked with a lot, and Detox, which was another guy he trained. So, you know, he's got friends and he's got people he trained. I mean, he worked with me in the ring on some certain moves and stuff like that. He's like, throw me around, mama. He would let me and any social beat the shit out of him in the ring and, and, and never complained. Never complained. He never complained about putting anybody over. Never complained. Never. Never. Never in my presence. I've been around 21 years. I've, I've never seen him. I've never seen him. He would be like, all right. He would go up to town and go, all right, Pop, what am I doing tonight? Well, Trent, when you do this, this is... Okay, is that all you want me to do, or can I do this and this and this with it? And so I was like, well, if you think he's going to add to the match, then do it. And he's like, well, I think he's going to add to the match. And guess what? It did. So he knew his shit, you know. So, But, yeah, I'm definitely, and I'm honored. As soon as I heard about the show, I was out of town, and I had contacted Annie Social, because I heard she was on, and said, yo, you need anybody, I'm there. I contacted Cashmere. They were like, Cashmere was like, absolutely, want you part of it. I'm honored. It's a privilege for me, you know, it's to pay homage to, to, to a good guy, to like my little brother, my little Peck's bad boy, you know, um, it's just, I wish it was for something happier, but, um, I, I think Chen will be looking down and, uh, I personally think that he'll know that he was highly, not only loved, but highly respected, not only as a, as talent, but as a, as a, a fellow, uh, wrestling brother. So, and, that, and that's important in this business because sometimes you're alone and that's a scary thing. Hmm. Very true. I'd like to thank you for coming on. And of course, you know, I want to put out there before we let you go for the fans that are listening and want to check out Acid Fest. If, even if you can't make it, you can donate to Acid Memorial at uh, All the money is going to the family. So I want to put that out there and I want to thank you again for coming on. Oh, I want to thank you for allowing me to express on a, on a great guy. I, I mean, I don't care what anybody else says. I'm telling you how, how I knew Trent and that's how I always remember Trent. And, you know, I, I, it, it, this is not one of those things where it's like, oh, yeah, it's a scam. It's a genuine thing. It's to help the family out with the funeral expense. You know, like I said, he wasn't a fan. Everybody knew Trent was a, a very wealthy man. So, you know, if, if, you know what? $5 is $5 if you could donate it. I know they're going to be selling T-shirts, um, probably a memorial photo, a memorial pin. And I, and I wouldn't be surprised if they're going to have DVD selling for this, too. But all proceeds do. Go to the um, family. It's a PayPal account all set up that w- that was set up. Um, so it's not a scam. You know, like some of these, these charity things, people are leery. to like, oh, they're going to keep the money. Yeah. Nope, all money goes to the family. As a matter of fact, the family will be there that night to accept the, the funds that were raised that night. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for coming on, and uh, good luck at Acid Fest. It's going to be a huge event. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And, thank and you, good Amy. luck to you guys with, with your show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, real quick before we go to the next uh, recording, I wanted to clear up on that uh, Acid Memorial at com. The PayPal account is no longer active um, due to reasons that will be explained during the Johnny Cashmere um, interview. So if you want to send money because you can't make it to the event, contact Johnny Cashmere on Facebook. Am I right?
missionary. Yep. That's absolutely correct. The, um, yeah, he said um, he has no problem with giving out the information, the PayPal infor- information directly to, to people that are interested in donating. But, uh, yeah, he doesn't want to just publicly announce it at this time. So, And I'm sure, like like we even said no, before but- earlier, when people go to Acid Fest, uh, they will have you know separate areas and, and donation booths and everything else where if you actually t- attend the show and you want to give a little more than just $10, or, you can do that there as well. Oh, yeah. Now we're going to go to our next interview, which is with CZW, that's Combat Zone Wrestling's owner, DJ Hyde. We'll be back after that. All right, we are here on the Trent Acid Tribute Radio Show, and on the line with me, I have CZW's own DJ Hyde. DJ, how are you doing? I'm making it through the day, my friend. How are you? Oh, you know, I wish we could be speaking on better terms, but, um, you know, you were close you know, uh, with Trent, of course, working with him in CZW and all that, and I was wondering, uh, you know, what is one fun memory you have of Trent? A fun memory? Um, <laughs> well, Trent, there's... I mean, if you talk about Trent, there's a lot of stories you can tell about Trent. Trent was always about having fun. Um, I mean, probably the most fun that I've ever had with him was uh, one day where, and this is a, a story that, you know, is just a typical Trent day. You know, one day he was driving through a Wendy's uh, drive through and, uh, you know, the kid who's uh, at the window is a big fan of Trent's and, you know, sees the guys in the, in the car have CZW shirts on and blah, 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 blah. Trent's in the back seat. kid doesn't know it's on him. You know, hey, you know, this, 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 Trent Ash is the man. He's the greatest thing in the world. And then, uh, you know, Trent just pops out. He goes, hey, do you want my autograph, Ron? The, the kid just, like, totally flips. And then, like, he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, well, get me a chicken sandwich. And it was just, like, one of those moments that were really funny. <laughs> uh, and, uh, I mean, there, there's, Trent was notorious for doing things like that. He was he was just that type of guy. He was always in the locker room trying to have fun. You I mean, he's, he's one of those kind of people that when he walked in, you know, he was there to have a good time and to do what he loved, you know. So, it's it's one of those, like, it's just a little story. I mean, I could probably sit here and ramble off a million different things about Trent, but that's just how he is. What is one thing you feel Trent would want his fans to remember him for? Oh, man. I mean, Trent, I'm not, I'm not real sure what he would want. I mean, Trent, Trent was a very odd guy, you know. I mean, he would just pretty much want him to be known for him. I mean, when Trent was on, he was the best. I mean, Trent, when Trent came to work, I mean, he, he could sit there, he could take the crowd, and he could make them feel anything he wanted, you know, and I think that's what they'll best want him to, you know, be remembered for, for his work in the ring, you know, for, for you know, being a star. Roughly, that's what it is. What stood out to you most about Trent? Pardon me? I said, what stood out to you most about Trent? Trent had what in this business is called it. And he didn't just have it as in a wrestling ring. He had it in a locker room. When Trent Acid walked into a building, whether it was in a, in a, a ring, a locker room, a party, or even just at your house, you knew Trent was there. There was something about Trent that just, he was different than everybody else. Um, you know, when he... When he would walk into a room, people would notice. And it wasn't because he was, like, loud and obnoxious or anything like that. It was just, like, you had a feeling like something was going on and you just had to turn to pay attention. Now, if you were to write a, a book about Trent Acid's life, what would you call it? Ah, oh, man, Trent Acid's life. Probably call it highs and lows, man. Uh, you know, Trent, uh, I mean, Trent has had some tremendous highs and, you know, his demons kind of caught up with him at times, and uh, I don't know if he, he knew how to really handle them, and, uh, but I think everybody can relate to it, and, that, and that's something that I think would definitely be, you know, some book that I would write. Uh, Missionary, got any questions? Yeah, hey, pleasure to talk to you, uh, DJ Hyde, uh, which could have been underneath better circumstances. But uh, I wanted to no know, problem, in, in your opinion, um, who was one of Trent Acid's heroes and inspirations in life? If you ask Trent, Trent would tell you his only hero is himself. <laughs> um, I think I think Trent looked up to to Masahiro Chono, guys like that, Shawn Michaels. Uh, if you just looked at at the guys that he kind of mimicked, right? Uh, you know, and, and some of his uh, characters and things came from, uh, you know, who defined him. I mean, Trent in the ring was, was Michael Birdie outside the ring. They were the same guy, 
right. but just his style, his presence. Uh, the other thing is the ECW guys. I mean, when uh, Notorious, when Trent was 14, him and a good buddy of his, Billy Real, were, were sitting in those stands and said, we're going to do this someday. And he's out there watching guys like Tommy Dreamer and Raven. And, uh, you know, basically he did. You know, he <laughs> stepped up in it. At one point, he was selling out that same building that Tommy Dreamer and Raven. Wow. Now, um, Trent Acid's crowning achievement or crowning moment in his career, in your opinion? Hmm. I think a lot of people would say winning best of the best, too, was his defining moment. I mean, that show, not only just for himself, but in CZW, was one of the shows that early on made uh, this company a huge success. I mean, he took on some of the best in the world and went out there and won that tournament. Um, personally, I would probably say Cage of Death 5. Um, I mean, Cage of Death is CZW's biggest show, and when Trent has the opportunity to perform in front of a large crowd, he makes magic happen. And he was kind of in out of his element doing a hardcore match. And he still shines just as much as anybody else. And, uh, I mean, that, that was Trent. But that's the best, too, is probably going to be up there. And I think KJ at 5 would be right back with it. Uh, one last question, DJ Hyde. Um, what's the, uh, what's one thing about Michael Verdi you'll miss? Uh, what do I miss about Verdi, man? What's the most? Pro- probably just, just the emotion. Um, me and Trent. We're never great brothers or anything like that. He's had he's had a lot of other friends and people in this business that were were a lot closer than me and him. But even when we had a problem, you know, me and him could have got into a huge argument, had a fist fight, and if I would have had a, a problem, whether it be you know running CZW or or you know something with my family or a girl or just a friend, I could have called him and and said, "Hey, man, like, yo, uh, you know, I know we got some heat, and, you know, we got some issues, but." can you help me out with this? Or, hey, can you give me some advice? Or, what do you think about this? And Trent was one of those guys that every time we talked, it was always it was always emotional. And, yeah. And and I can remember, you know, I mean, even when I took over CZW about a year ago, and something that will always stick out to me, I, I you know, kind of let Trent go because he had some demons and it was kind of affecting him and, and I couldn't have it in my locker room. And we, we had a pretty emotional conversation where the, the table was flipped, you know, and uh, it was more me kind of coming to him, and and, and 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 that's just something I'll always remember about him, and something I'll never forget. I have one last question for you, and that's what can uh, what can fans expect from Acid Fest? Ah, oh, man, Acid Fest! Acid Fest is going to be the combination of all of Trent's friends, his closest family in the business, getting together putting on a show uh, for him. I mean, this show means a lot to a lot of people that are in wrestling, and it means a lot to me personally. I mean, I'm currently, I don't know if a lot of fans are aware or not, I am the new owner of CZW. This man basically single-handedly at one point put this company on his back and carried it. And he's helped me personally in the business. Uh, You know, from the time I came up 10 years ago, even until recent year when I took over, I mean, his best friend in the world, Johnny Cashmere. I also, you know, think there's going to be a lot of people who have personal beefs and personal, you know, issues with each other that are going to put them aside. I mean, it's to do that for this man, it shows what kind of respect everybody has for him yeah. and what you can expect. There is nobody who is going to go out there and, you know, mail it in. You're going to see a show, you know, in the afternoon at the arena that that is going to be like unlike anything else it's going to be emotional and it's going to be fantastic one of the matches is homicide and b-boy versus ruckus and sunjay dutt that could main event pretty much any company there is i mean from top to bottom those four guys are for the top talents out there and they're coming in here working for free for the respect they have for this man and that's not even the main event wow. you know you're you're going to have guys that, that old, young, his friends, guys you haven't seen in years, you know, and they're doing this for a good cause, and they're doing this for the right reason, and and Acid Fest was named that because Trent loved a few things. He loved wrestling, he loved his friends, he loved his family, and he loved the party, 
And Trent would have wanted all his friends and family there to have a big party party to see him wrestle. Well, you know, we're uh, urging all of our fans to check out Acid Fest. Of course, they can find it on Facebook. And, uh, you know, I want to thank you for joining us. Yeah, and anybody who wants to check it out, they can check it out at czwrestling.com. We're going to start having a lot more coming here after this week. And, uh, you know, just log on, check it out. If you need tickets, they're available at the door, and it's only 10 bucks. I mean, people come out for a good cause, and you're going to see a great show. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, DJ. Thank Hyde. you, guys. All right, you have just heard from DJ Hyde, of course, the owner of Combat Zone Wrestling. Now, we have a very special caller on the line, don't we, Missionary? Yeah, we do. We have uh, a childhood friend of Trent Acid. We're going to cue in Frank. How are you doing, man? Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? Uh, pretty good, man. I'm oh, could be doing better. Oh, I was just going to say, uh, you grew up with uh, Trent Acid or Michael Verdi. What are some memories you have of growing up with him? I mean, you know what, man? I, I, I want, First, I want to uh, thank you guys coming on here. I mean, this is an awesome tribute. You know, I, I called it up to where uh, Missy was talking to another friend. And, uh, you know, the thing is, with Verdi, you know, you know, a lot of people know this, but, but a lot of people didn't go back as far as uh, somebody like myself and, you know, Billy Real, Nick Burke, even Kashmir, you know, it, wrestling was his life. And, you know, him and I, you know, have a, a almost a 20-year relationship as, as best friends. And the thing is, is a lot of people, you know, between him and Billy, I mean, we started out, we did backyard wrestling, and we all actually turned pro around the same time as well, and then Billy did first. And the the thing is, is with with, with Verdi, man. I mean, it was always in him. You know, I mean, even even up to the day, I I remember, you know, you guys were talking about what was his like crowning moment, and yeah. you know, Missy did answer it as when he went to Japan, because we used to always watch. We used to buy tapes off uh, Rob Feinstein, and we used to watch, you know, FMW New Japan tapes, and you know, there's guys like Jushin Liger and stuff like that. You know, doing the, the high spots and the aerial moves and stuff like that. And, you know, we all were amazed with that, and Verdi especially. And we always said to each other, I mean, we grew up in the ECW arena, Verdi for one. I mean, that's what brought, you know, the bond between myself, uh, Billy Real, Nick Burke, and, and some others, and uh, Rob Marino, and, and, and even Misty Sampson. That's, I mean, that's how we all met. We used to go to the Travelage. But the thing is, as a lot of people will know, is, is when he wasn't wrestling, I mean, this is after his tours of Japan, after him being on top of the world in CZW, he was still that kid. And, you know, we, a lot of people say, like, one of his biggest uh, uh, quotes was calling everybody a mark. But, but a lot of people don't know, you know, it, it, as professional as he was, he was the biggest mark of them all. You know what I mean? And, that, and the thing is, is with that, what, what, I, what I mean by that is, you know, you could be walking down the street with him just having a conversation and somebody driving by in a car and he would throw his hands up like he's coming out, you know, making an entrance. And we'd be at the beach or at a lake or something swimming and they'd blast music. I mean, everything was wrestling. Everything was cut in a promo. And, I mean, that was the one thing that you can appreciate. And like I said, it was the bond. It was the one common love that we all shared. And, you know, for 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 him to leave such a mark, I mean, you know, the, the no pun intended, but, you know, just the outpour of, of support and people that actually cared. And there's a lot of people I don't know. Even some of the people on here I'm listening to, I have no idea who they are. And, you know, I just want to thank everybody because, you know, even like right now, I was calm before I even came on here, but it's just like shaking up. And, you know, it is a gone too soon type of thing. But, uh, you know, for me, you know, I talked to him a few days ago before he passed, and he, the guy has done everything that he's wanted to do. And, I mean, I know that's kind of, you know, I, I don't want to insult anybody that cares and says, like, he could have lived so much, but... You know, even for somebody like myself and a lot of people out there who want to put themselves in his shoes to experience the stuff he did. You know, Michael Verdi, Trent Aston, whatever you, you want to call him, you know, with his music aside, was, was a rock star. Yeah, basically, I mean, what it sounds like is it's it's you guys are all pretty much brothers watching the tube, you know, just like most of us growing up, watching, you know, WWF or Japan or, or, or whatever else was available to you, and and you guys just fell in love with it and became a part of it. I mean, that is the dream. I, it, it is, and and he's the one. He's the one who did it. You know, I mean, you can ask, you can ask Billy Real the same question. You can ask, you know, Nick Burke the same question. You know, the the thing is, 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 is all of us when we knew when Verdi made it. You know, 
Nick Burke's been on WWE TV, and Billy's had his spot on on, on WWE before. And then these guys have been some places, but it's it's when Birdie went to Japan, we knew. We said, "Wow, this guy has it." Yeah. And you know, it, it was you know it was the thing is is you know even even him he used to when he was with CZW, uh, he used to take me in the back. And I mean, when we were kids, we used to go off to the wrestlers like New Jack, uh, Gary Wolf, and all these other guys, and we used to say, "Hey, can you get us in?" And I remember we used to hustle our way just to like get these guys to sneak us in, so we could avoid paying the ten fifteen dollar cover charge. And that was our thing, and you know, and especially him, he was always hustling, always trying to get noticed. And you know, for him to to, to make it, and you know, kind of get on the status of you know his, you know, and I, I heard some people on here saying like, you know, I'm going back now. I couldn't tell you what he would say, you know, a year from a year ago, who his influences are. But when we were kids. You know, his influencers were guys like Sabu, uh, Two Cold Scorpio. Right. And in my opinion, he made it to that type of status. You know, I mean, yeah, he didn't get on the big TV. You know, he wasn't on the big show as much as as he should have been, in my opinion. He's definitely a guy who should have been, you know, on at the NXT right now or whatever else is going on, on TNA doing something. And Johnny is a tag team. Whatever, but he, it, it, in my opinion, he he made it. He made it to that plateau, to where ECW was. You know, CCW is, is a great organization. I mean, I, I don't follow it right now, but at that time when he was there, and I got to see my best friend perform in front of a thousand plus people and not miss a beat. Yeah, and I mean, it was just like wow. It, 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 you know, it, it, he's living. He, I live my dream vicariously through him. Because I was like, wow, you know, when I was 15, 14, 13 years old, that's what what I wanted to do, and he did it. Yeah. And he always felt like he had to prove something and, and impress somebody. He gave, he was, he was this business. He was professional wrestling. Michael Verdi, Trent Acid, whatever you want to call him. He was this business. And and that actually, that, that's really nice to hear because, I mean, you're not hearing the story of somebody who didn't reach their goals. You're hearing the story of a man who not only grew up loving wrestling became a wrestler and not just any wrestler but became a great wrestler and did everything that he wanted to do i mean i mean th- that that's honestly that that's a that's a great inside story man i i you know i, I appreciate it guys i mean i mean there's not you no know, there's not really much else i could say i mean you know the, the only thing that you know i can say that has has come good out of all this is that it has brought you know all of us together. I mean, I, I, I'm from Philadelphia. I live in Las Vegas now. And, you know, to, for me to have a conversation with Missy Sampson, Johnny Cashmere, Nick Burke, and not talking to these people, and just like we, we get to reflect back on, on you know, on Birdie's life and our experiences that we had and shared with him. I mean, it, it, it's just so much, man. And, and you know, the, the day that I heard he, he died, my whole body went numb. And it was just like, it was one of the worst days of my life. I mean, I haven't experienced any tragedies in my life, and this is by far the worst tragedy. And, you know, the the only thing I can say is, you know, know, God bless his family, his little brother, his mother, his aunt, and, you know, everybody that loved him. And it's, you know, just just know he's, he's in a better place, and he's, you know, he's, he's loving this right now. This is, this is something that, that Verdi would want. You know, you, we all think, say to ourselves, like, hey, we wish we can go when we die, go see who shows up at our funeral or who shows up at a, a, a tribute to us. Everybody who comes in on July 10th that is there, just know that this is something Trent Acid, Michael Verdi, it, this is what he would want. This is something that he would want to see. He would want to see everybody there celebrating him because he works so hard. To, to be what he is. He lived it. He, he wasn't Michael Verdi. You know, he wasn't. You know, with me, he was Michael Verdi. With his close friends, he was Michael Verdi. But everybody else, he was trying to ask. And he, he, sometimes you had to bring him down to earth and say, look, you know, all right, Verdi. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he had some nicknames out there. I'm not going to throw them out there, but we know, we know what they are. But you know what I'm saying? He would love this. And this radio show here, this is, this, he's listening to it right now, and, and he's, he's Telling you know the guys he's up in heaven with, like listen to this, yo check these the guys are doing a tribute on me. <laughs> this is the type of shit he loves. This is it. This is it. And you know for you guys to come on here and put such a, uh, a good show on here and have have people that 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 are close to him and we're close to him, uh, it means so much. It will mean uh, a heck of a lot, and it does right now. Thank thank you, Frank. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much. I appreciate much. you guys having me on. All right. All right. God bless you guys again once again. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. On the line with us, we have another one of his friends in the business. Let's welcome to the line, Tong Po, a.k.a. B-Boy. Yo, what's, what's up, up, man? Guys? Doing good, man. How are you guys doing? Uh, doing all, all right. right. Doing good, you know, uh, considering the circumstances. Now, you worked with Trent a lot and were good friends with Trent. What do you feel that Trent would want his fans to remember most about him? Oh, uh, absolutely. Me and uh, me and Verdi go back about eight years, since like 2002. And uh, I think what with Verdi would want his fans to know about him is just how much he loved wrestling. You know what I mean? Um, when he was like a lot, I heard a lot of people when he was on, he was one of the best. And in my opinion, um, uh, out here in California, we we used to get you know tapes on the East Coast, and uh, the three guys that were getting noticed were Homicide, Loki, and uh, Trent Acid. And um, Trent and Trent Acid is the one that uh, stood out in my mind because he had that um, that it factor. And um, as when me and uh, Verdi started getting close and everything, I I I really believe that he would want the fans basically to remember him and know just on his work ethic because he was he was on par that everybody was trying to get at. Yeah. And um, he loved wrestling, he loved partying, and um, he was he was he was one of a kind, man. He was he, he he's still one of a kind. Nobody could touch Verdi on what he's done. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have a story about working with him, maybe on a show that sticks out to you that you would like to share with our listeners? Um, there's actually a couple. Um, when I first came in the CCW, it was 2002 for Best for the Best 2. Um, and, um, it was me and Birdie in the third round. And, uh, Birdie, um, Birdie was busted his ass already, um, throughout the whole tournament. And with me and him, he, we, uh, he was, he was, he was a little blown up, you know what I mean? And so was I, and we didn't know what to do, and we just went out there and just worked. <laughs> um, and, um, the, my fondest memory is like after, uh, I heard it went down to him and, and, uh, in the third round. Uh, he pinned me, and while he pinned me, he was like, thank you, brother. And um, and he was just like, I love you, man. Thank you so much. And then um, that, that's one of my fondest memories uh, with him. Um, just uh, because after that match, I felt like um, there was a mutual respect. And from that mutual respect, became a, a great friendship yeah. in and out the ring. You that's know what I mean? classy. Mm-hmm. Now, if you were to write a book about Verdi's life, what would the title be? <laughs> oh man, I, what would it be? Um, oh, I, you know what would it be? Just this. This was some of Verdi, in in a couple words. It would be like, "Yo, hey, yo, yo," <laughs> and then it would be dot dot dot. Mark. <laughs> that, that, was, that, that would basically that would basically be it, man. I mean. Mike, uh, Mike, I, I heard, um, I heard a couple people on there, and I mean, every, it's well documented that Mike, uh, that Mike had demons and everything like that. But he wouldn't be, he wouldn't want to be known for that. You know what I mean? And I just think with the with the yo 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 Mark thing, it's it, it's classic. You know what I mean? That's that's what everybody remembers him by. It's like he was, he was, he was the he was the prankster. He was the funny guy. He was, and like like what DJ said because I heard DJ on the line, and it, like when he came into. It could be your house, it could be a show, it could be a locker room, and you'll be surprised how much respect fucking Verdi got in, in a locker room, you know what I mean? Yeah. People would stop what they're doing and come up to him and shake his hand and give him respect and everything like that. But um, I think, uh, I think yeah, I think the, the whole Mark thing would probably, probably sum up his whole life. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've got one more question for you before I kick it over to my co-host, Missionary, and that's uh, July 10th at the... Uh, the arena, you're going to be in a tag team match with Homicide taking on Sanjay Dutt and Ruckus on the Acid Fest event. What can fans expect from that match? Oh, man. Well, th well first of all, there's like a whole backstory because um, Verdi and Homicide go back since 98. And they, they, from, people, what they don't, from what people don't know, um, Homicide and Verdi are really good friends. And, um, um, and so am I. I've been, with this, I've been friends with them eight years. All the stuff that, like, is, uh, you know, that's memorable in CZW with him and Ruckus, and him and Ruckus had a tremendous, tremendous friendship along with Sanjay. Um, it's, it's, it's gonna be, um, uh, like, the way I see things is like, we're putting on a show, uh, we're not putting on a show for fans. We're putting, we're putting that match together and we're gonna do that match for Birdie. 
and uh, we're going to bust our ass, and we're going to give our best performance and effort in that. Um, uh, Homicide and myself has have had to tag with each other in like four years, and um, Sanjay and Ruck is 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 it's going to be it, it's going to be good. I, I have a real I have a really good feeling, and it's it's for a good cause, and and we're all there to help. And I couldn't I couldn't be more prouder of uh, being a part of that match. That's yeah. It's it's definitely going to be a killer match. I, I I can't wait to get a hold of the DVD when it finally comes out. Um, I had a question though for you. Um, what do you think one of his? What do you think one of Trent Acid's crowning achievements, or or what? What do you think his crowning achievement or moment in his career was, in your opinion? Yeah, uh, in my opinion, um, I would I would say um, everybody has their own opinion. I mean, some say it would be best of the best. I, I just heard Frank, who was his uh, childhood friend, would say with Japan, which is probably true. Uh, in my opinion, I would think it, it was when uh, when uh, the whole crew from CZW went to Italy. Um, I know because uh, uh, Mike's always wanted to go to Italy, and we were when we were over there and stuff like that. It was uh, it was a good time, and Mike was treated like a king, being Italian and everything like that. So of course he was living it up and and everything like that. But um, but be, but besides that, I would I would probably have to agree with. Um, agree with Frank that it was Japan because just the way that Verdi uh, wrestled and everything like that was it was straight Japanese you know what I mean it was straight uh, corrosive from from the get go and uh, I would say that a crowning achievement would be that um what do you think uh, uh, who do you think is one of Trent Acid's heroes and inspirations in life hmm. that's, a, that's actually a good question um I would I would say that he was a uh, he was uh, one of his inspirations. Probably I mean he used to he used to say Yakuza, so I would definitely say Chono for, for sure. Um, I would also say um, guys like uh, I know he was a real big fan of Scorpio, and I would say that was an inspiration as well. Yeah. Um, Trent, I, 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 to me, Trent would admit who was his inspiration because he was the biggest uh, he was his own biggest hero. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, but um, but he, I, I would say those guys for sure. And what's the what's the one thing about Trent or Michael Verdi you'll miss, B boy? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna miss a lot, man. Um, there's there's a couple times. Um, that when he was uh, when he was in trouble and everything. Uh, there was one time uh, when he was in trouble and he was uh he, he was basically um in jail or whatever you want to call it. Um, I, I I wrote him, you know. I mean, I wrote him a couple times, and uh, I mean, he wrote back like right off the bat. And then uh, when he got out, um, this is when I just moved uh, to Philly. Uh, I think it was about a, a year ago or something like that. Um, he, I was at the arena training um, and all that stuff, and uh, I saw him. And then he looked at me, and he just comes up to me and gives me a big old hug. <laughs> and um, uh, he gave me a big old hug, and it, we we like stood there for like two minutes or, or like two minutes, and. He was uh, kind of getting a little emotional, but he was trying to hide it back, and I knew he wanted to cry. And he was just like, "Thank you, Benny. Um, you help you and all the people that wrote to me, like um, helped me out a lot, and uh, basically boosted up my confidence and made me made me want to become better. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, that's 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 something that I'll always remember and um, always cherish, and just just the times that we've had. I mean, there's been numerous times. That um, uh, Verdi and myself have just chilled outside the ring and um, chilling in locker rooms and everything like that. The one thing that I'm gonna, one thing I'm gonna definitely miss is just him being around, just in general. You know what I mean? The uh, the world's lost. Uh, like like I, I've, I've I've said this many times, and you could kind of um, think of how to say it or whatever. But the world's lost the soldier. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? He he really was a good one, and it's it, and it sucks that. Um, it sucks that uh, that he was so young. He he shouldn't have gone. You know what I mean. But God takes the best, and Verdi was the best. You know? Yeah, yeah, very cool. Thank you very much, Pete Boy, for sharing your insight and your thoughts and your feelings, man. I mean, it, it, it means a lot to hear so many people coming out and and just wanting to volunteer. You know, some of their thoughts and 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 just just some of their stories that they've experienced with Trent Acid. You know, I mean, the, us, the fans, are just so much richer for it. You know, it's it's just wonderful. Thank you. It's it's crazy, man. Just like uh, thank you guys. I mean, uh, there's a lot of shows, radio shows that are doing um 
that are doing, you know, tribute shows and everything like that. And this is actually my first time. A lot of people have been asking me to be on the show and everything, and I just couldn't do it. And now that there's some closure, and now that, uh, like, I finally in my head know that he's at peace, I, I feel that I can actually talk now, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I, just like everybody, I was, I was a fucking wreck, you know? Right, right. Well, I mean... But I wanted to, but, uh, but I want to thank you guys. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right, we do have another caller on the line, and actually this is the guy that writes all of our press releases, and he uh, has been doing a lot of research and wants to talk about Trent Acid, so I'm going to go ahead and cue him in. This is Andrew Carlock. What's up, man? Hey, guys. How's it going? Hey, how's it going, Andrew? It's going good, man. So you wanted you, you wanted to talk about Trent a little bit, and I uh, figured what we would do is we'll talk, and uh, we'll leave the phone lines open for anybody who wants to call in through the rest of the second hour at 347-994-2320. Do remember, if you want to listen to the third hour, which will feature the Billy Real interview, the Johnny Cashmere interview, and the Pretty Hate Machine Jason Gotti interview, you will have to go to the link provided in the chat room or go to wrestling-news.com and find it from there, I do believe. Correct, Missionary? Yeah, actually, I mean, if, if you're going to check it out, it is just wrestling-news.com. You can go into the chat room, and there are four links posted above. Obviously, we have Win, uh, Winamp, Windows, Real Player, and iTunes for people that use Apple computers, Macs, Apple. Oof. But uh, yeah, what else, what, what's going on, Andrew? How are you feeling, sir? Not too bad. How you been, missionary? Um, not not too not too bad. Uh, not too good, I guess either. I mean, it is kind of a uh, you know, it's it's a collection of thoughts and feelings and stuff like that, and and it's just overwhelming, you know, how much you learn about a man from his friends and his family and his brothers. So it's kind of a somber. It's a, I mean, it's it's kind of nice we're able to talk to all these great people, but it's kind of a shame the reason why. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's he he did leave us too soon. You know, um, I I understand that. Uh, you know, I, I and I understand he 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 lived everything that he wanted to in his dream. You know, I mean, that's that's always a nice thing to know is that uh, uh, nothing stopped him, nothing held him back. You know, anything that this man wanted, this man went out and got period, you know, and, and that's pretty much, you know, the general consensus from all the different people that we've heard of that, that nothing ever stopped uh, Trent Acid, nothing, you know, in life, in the ring, you know, anything that he wanted to do or people wanted him to do, he would do, you know, simple as that, there there was no quit, there was no stop, you know. I mean, this is, this is a guy who a lot of people might not be that familiar with. You know, but I mean, he's he accomplished quite a bit in the short amount of time that he was that he was here. Yeah, this is a guy who challenged for the Ring of Honor belt at one point. Right, right. I mean, he had plenty of matches. You know, uh, with him and obviously Johnny Cashmere being the backseat boys. You know, CZW was probably when when I personally got into uh, Trent Acid and Johnny Cashmere, and and you know, I mean. That and, and as silly as it is to say this, you know, I discovered them also because of a video game, you know, that that featured Johnny Cashmere and Trent Acid. Uh, it's some people might know it, some people might not. Uh, I used to design graphics for various video games, and there was this one that was uh, called EWR, and it was a it was a cheesy '90s Booker game, you know, and uh, basically you played a Booker, but you know. Two of the characters in there, Johnny Cashmere and Trent Acid, were these phenomenal rookies that were always built up to the top. And, and as silly as it sounds, since they used all the, the regular indie guys you know, that have been wrestling all the way up to WWE, you actually got to know a little bit more about you know, people that were famous in the industry or, or people that were looked at as young bucks and young lions and such. And uh, it's because of a video game that I went out and started checking out some of their matches and, and just absolutely fell in love with them and realized why the people that created the actual uh, internal design for this game thought so highly of them because, I mean, Trent Acid was just phenomenal. Johnny Cashmere was phenomenal. It's it's amazing. So I never knew that. I, I, I first became familiar with them once um, when they made their appearance several years ago on uh, Sunday Night Heat as the, what was it, the Backseat Dudleys or mm-hmm. something of that like that. No, yeah, the, the first time that I saw them, and then at that point, I, I just started looking to see what I could find. Um, but I saw that, and it was I was I was blown away once I started finding, especially when I started finding more and more uh, matches of theirs online and right. tapes and things like that. Now, of course, you know, a funny story is is uh, I you know, I'd heard of Trent Acid before JCW, but I remember taking a trip, and on the way 
to my location that I was heading to, my destination, uh, which was a wrestling show, I had gone into Utah, and I remember, you know, going on a walk while I was there because I had a layover, and there was this video store, and I walked in the video store, and, you know, I'm like, wow, this is just a really big cluster, you know, and I walk through it, and I'm looking around, and nothing interests me, and I go to walk out the door, and I turn, like, I see something catch my eye, and I turn around, and it's a JCW DVD with Trent on the cover. <laughs> so I ended up buying that, and I have I have all of the JCW the series like the episode series. Yeah. I have every episode that he was on, and I, I it just I, it was weird like seeing him on there and be like, wow, I had heard of this guy and he's really good. You know, granted he hated the holy trinity gimmick, he right. was really good. I mean, he knew what he was doing when it came to pissing off that crowd. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a talent, you know. I mean, it, it's one thing to get. You know, as they call it, cheap heat. You know, and make fun of somebody's city, but it, it, it's a, it's completely another when you can create a riot. You know, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I mean, just just to even even bring it up again, you know, just so people know that if they are interested in in, in catching some of the matches that Trent Acid has had over the years, you can easily go to hybrident.tv and uh, they have a paper stream catalog right now featuring all of Trent Acid's uh, matches. And all the proceeds go to the Acid Memorial Fund to help pay for the funeral expenses. So, you know, of course, Acid Fest July 10th at the arena. I want to put that over one more time before we go into our third hour, which will be able to be heard at wrestling-news.com. But uh, you know, of course, the Acid Fest July 10th 2:30 bell time admission is free with a $10 donation to the Trent Acid Memorial Fund to help his family pay for funeral costs. In mind, if you want to donate more than $10, you are more than welcome to at the door. Um, Seating will be on a first-come, first-served basis. There will be no general admission or front row seats, so it is based on how far back in line you are. If you want a good seat, you might want to get there really early. Um, of course, already scheduled, there is Homicide and B-Boy versus Sanjay Dutton Ruckus. There's the Trent Acid Memorial Rumble with uh, participants to be announced. Um, and there's a long list of people that have confirmed to be there with the likes of Adam Flash, DJ Hyde, The Hit Squad, uh, Nate Hatred, Kwame, Steven DeAngelis, that's, of course, the ECW announcer, referee Mike Keener from ECW, the SATs, um, Ruckus from CZW and Wrestling Society X, of course, uh, along with many other people. So I wanted to put that over. Uh, of course, um, if you want to know more information on that event, head it over to cvwrestling.com. But uh, go ahead, Andrew, the floor is yours again. Yeah, just um, you know, just look at some of the people that Trent was in the ring with. Um, e- even if you look at it from a, uh, excuse me, from a mainstream wrestling fan's point of view, you know, just look at a few of the names that he's been in the ring with: guys like Scott Hall, Two Cold Scorpio, Sabu, Samoa Joe, Homicide, Steve Carino, Sid Vicious. I mean, that's that's, yeah. that's like a who's who right there, just of guys he's been in the ring with. Oh yeah, Alex Shelley, Human Tornado. I mean, just you can keep going on. You know. Yeah, uh, the ICP, you know, I mean, people sometimes like the NSYNC Clown Posse, some don't, but I thought I'd bring that up. <laughs> you know, Adam Flash, uh, there's just, just so many people, you know, I mean, it's, he, he really, it, it, it is, it, that's exactly what it is. It's a who's who of people that, you know, got to experience a match with Trent Acid, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing. It is truly amazing. I mean, and to hear, you know, the people that are coming on sharing these stories, they're all, you know, heartfelt, and you'll hear emotion out of them. And, you know, some of these people knew, you know, Michael or Trent on a different level. I mean, some knew him through wrestling, some, you know, like we heard earlier, were childhood friends. I mean, it, it's a nice array of people. Yeah, I'm, I'm really, I really like the fact that we're having that some uh, people who knew him had growing up, like, uh, like Frank earlier, uh, called in and you know people who knew him before and outside of wrestling you know just shows how far reaching and how much people love this man yeah and I also wanted to finally plug that uh, if people did want to send donations um, the PayPal is inactive currently um, as was stated earlier but if you do want to send donations you can easily go to facebook uh, dot com and then just go into the search bar and check out and look up uh, Johnny Cashmere. He he has all the information for serious donations. Um, as we also said, during Acid Fest, they're going to be taking a, a $10 donation at the door. It is free to enter, but uh, they're, they're expecting at least a $10 donation to help with the funeral expenses. Um, but like we also said, there's also going to be merchandise. There's going to be a program. 
you know, so many other things that uh, are done completely in a charitable way um, to to help benefit the family in, in this time of their need. So, you, even if you take away the fact that this is a tribute show for for all our friends, Trent Acid, that, that's a that's a good lineup. You know, I'd gladly even if if it was for no pretty much no reason, I would pay, gladly pay ten dollars to get in that show. Yeah, absolutely, it's, it's well worth it. That's for sure. Uh, I was just gonna say uh, we are going into the third hour, so if you do want to join us, you're more than welcome to. The uh, stream for the third hour is in the chat room. Of course, you can head on over to Wrestling Dash News to get the stream as well. So we are going into the third hour, and in the third hour, you will hear from Billy Real, Johnny Cashmere, the Pretty Hate Machine, Jason Gotti, and of course the unheard Trent Acid voicemail. So we will be playing that all in the second hour. Um, you know, for those of you tuning in that are going to be leaving us at the end of this hour, check out falsecountradio.com, of course, if you want to check out more False Count Radio. And, of course, for the Wrestling Soup, the wrestling-news.com. You guys stream every Thursday, correct? Yep. Uh, we pretty much have a show every Thursday. This week, Thursday, uh, if anybody's interested, we have Don Tony, a.k.a. Anthony de Blasi of the Don Tony and Kevin Castle Show. And we're also, reve- or not revealing, but we're also having Mr. Mystery on. Uh, anybody that is familiar with wrestling-news.com uh, already has an idea of who Mr. Mystery is and all the countless uh, inside information that he brings us. And he will be live on The Soup this Thursday at 1115 Eastern. Of course, as a lot of people have already done, if you're one of the people that have made graphics or videos as like a memorial or an homage for Trinas, we'd like to thank you. Uh, the videos are awesome. Uh, I personally had a chance to check out quite a few last night. What about you, missionary? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's there and there's surprisingly so many out there. Like every time, I mean, you can just go to YouTube. I'm not even talking about Google because Google will take you to Daily Motion and all these other places. But just YouTube alone, I think I saw probably about 20 videos already out there you know music montages just little clips of his matches and interviews and promos it's 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 nice to see you can pretty much get a you know a a, a general state of you know his career and and some of the great things that he's done you know but obviously as as we've been plugging to i mean there's just so many so many other outlets to look for just tributes and stuff like that and it's just amazing the outpouring of of love and appreciation that people had for trent acid it really is. Now, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go into the Pretty Hit Machine Jason Gotti interview. So go ahead, uh, Missionary, and cue it up. All right, we're here on the Trent Acid Tribute Radio Show. And on the line, I have with me the Pretty Hate Machine Jason Gotti. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. How are you? Oh, could be doing better. You know, I wish we could be speaking on different terms. You know, it's sad that we have to do it this way. Um, I had a couple questions for you, though, and uh, my first one is, what do you think Trent would want his fans to remember him most for? Um, I think that Mike would uh, want his fans to remember him most for and uh, know that he gave 110% every time he went in the ring. And, uh, you know, he gave it his all, his heart and soul in the business. And, uh, you know, I think his fans know that. And, you know, he was one of the most down-to-earth as far as wrestling-wise people to be around, you know what I mean? He really was. And uh he would always take time to talk to his fans and sign autographs and stuff like that. And uh, you know, he loved his fans and I know that. And uh that's why they loved him. Now you were actually close friends with uh Trent. What is a memory or a story about being with Trent that you would like to share with our listeners? Yeah, you know, the the memories that I have with him is, you know what I mean, just just us talking, you know what I mean, hanging out chilling in his house, you know, going, going to get cheesesteaks together, bullshitting. I don't really have a per se story that'll make you laugh or anything like that. Um, the things that I, I can share, the kind of personal things between us that we talk to, you know what I mean? We talked a lot about wrestling, but we, uh, we talked about other things, you know what I mean? And, uh, it just sucks that my friend's not here anymore. And, uh, I think that a lot of people knew Trent Asset, the wrestler, but I think very few people knew Michael Verdi, the person, and uh I was one of his true friends. You know, a lot of people don't know that we were friends. You know what I mean? I never name dropped and shit like that to try to get ahead in wrestling. Um, I liked him for who he was and I know he had problems and stuff like that, but deep down inside he had a big heart and I just think he lost his way in life and uh, it's just fucked up. Yeah, it really it really is. I'm sad about it. What stuck out most to you about Trent? I uh, as far as wrestling, um I'll do that first, I guess. As far as wrestling, I mean, the dude was friggin' determined. You know what I mean? He had a real passion for it. And, uh, you know, we, we talked about it before. I was like, you know, Mike, you're, you know, you're not the biggest guy. You're not the tallest guy. 
but you know, you have the it factor, you have charisma and you have the ability and, uh, you know what I mean? And that, and that just stuck out. I mean, he, he could have a good match with a fucking broomstick, you know what I mean? And it's the truth. He was a great worker. He really was. And, uh, you know, I, that's what I think as far as wrestling wise, as a person wise, I mean, he had a big heart, man. He, he would, he would give you the shirt off his back, you know? And, uh, that, that's something that I miss about him a lot. Um, it just sucks. Like I said, now, if you were to write a book about Trent's uh, life, what would the title be? If I was to write a uh, book about Trent's life, uh, the title, <laughs> I don't know, I guess uh, The Rise and Fall of a Superstar. I really don't know. I mean, um, you know, like I said, he's a good person. And uh, he, he definitely accomplished a lot of things in wrestling. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, started wrestling when he was 15, you know what I mean? And look, look the, the kid from 6th Street, you know what I mean, is, is now a household name, you know what I mean? People yeah. know him, you know, not just in the indies, but, but in WWE, TNA, he's, he's known, you know? And, I, and I'm I'm proud of him for that, you know what I mean? I mean, look, I, I, I'm not going to sit here and say I was his best friend. I was only friends with him for a couple of years, you know what I mean? Uh, I met him through my girlfriend. He lived down the street from my girl's house, and that's how we became friends. We <laughs> actually... <laughs> I didn't like him when I first met him and uh, how we became friends is uh, a mutual friend of ours told me that he was running his mouth about me and I went to confront him about it. And, you know, and sure enough, I'm so mad at the guy. I want to punch him. And then he, he became friends and we talked for like three hours and we hung out and it was like, huh. you know, and, and that's the thing about him too is, is like, you could be mad at him. Believe me, I've been mad at him before, but then like, he's so charming in the way he was and he makes you laugh that you just forget why you're mad. You know, he was, was a good person deep down. He was. Now, my co-host missionary has a couple questions he wants to ask you, so I'm going to give missionary the floor. Yeah, hey, Mr. Uh, Gotti. Um, what a, what is uh, Trent Acid's uh, crowning achievement in his career, in your opinion? In, in, in uh, my opinion? I mean, yeah. I don't know. I mean, he's, he's held titles in pretty much every organization he went to. Uh, he's traveled in different countries. And, and, you know, it's funny, too. It's like a lot of these workers or whatever oh i went to germany yeah well you paid your way this dude got paid you know what i mean he got not only did he get paid but they paid for his flight his hotel i mean i mean that's 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 amazing dude like you know what i mean that's amazing that he accomplished that yeah. you know what i mean and 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 it was all through hard work and and desire to never give up you know what i mean so that that's awesome for real who was um who was one of uh trent acid's heroes in life or inspirations in life uh, I know he liked Eddie Vedder. Uh, he was big in the music, um, you know, Pearl Jam, STP, things like that. Right. Um, you know, that's about it as far as I know. And um, what's what's the one thing about Michael you'll miss? Uh, I'm I'm going to miss just my friend. I'm going to miss you know Michael the person, not not Trent the wrestler. You know what I mean? Um, like I said, you know, our friendship was more. You know what I mean? On a personal basis, you know, we had a lot in common. We, you know, different backgrounds, the way we grew up, I guess. Uh, we had a bond and, uh, I'm just going to miss him. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, it sucks because, you know, I'm, I pretty much stay down the street from where he lives and I can look out my window and see his grandpa's house. Wow. And, uh, you know, it's hard when you're in, um, a grieving process and, uh, you know, you look, you look out the window and, and you see the guy's house and it's like, you know, like it's, I'll never, you know, I'll never get to see him again. And, uh, you know, I told him before, you know, a long time ago, I said, you know, we're friends first and wrestlers second. This fucking wrestling business don't mean shit. You know what I mean? We're friends. We're, you know what I mean? That That's first, bro. And that, that'll that never become, you know, between us. And, uh, you know, if people, you know, I'm sure a lot of people have stories and stuff like that, and that's fine. And, you know, but it's like, you know, people will be like, oh, he shouldn't have did this. He shouldn't have did that. I know from a personal standpoint, that I tried my best to help him with his demons. And I'm not going to sit here and say what they are. You know what I mean? Right. I'm not going to do that. But I, I've talked to him for fucking hours about it. I mean, I literally got in a fight with him about, about things because I cared. And, and that's the thing. I told him, I said, the only reason I'm, I'm preaching to you and like this and is because I care about you. And I don't want to wake up one day and, and hear that you're gone. And, uh, <sighs> And that and that is sad because that's what I heard. That's what I got woken up yesterday. And uh you know, my girlfriend told me ten in the morning, ten thirty in the morning, that Michael's 
passed away, and uh, I was fucking shocked. I mean, you know, it, it's sad. I miss him. Seriously, I really do. If you could describe uh, Michael's life in a word, what would that word be? Uh, triumph, because he, he overcame a lot of things to get where he was at, and he was a great fucking wrestler. And I think a lot of people know that, whether they like them or not. He was one of the best, without a doubt. Thank you very much, Jason. Thanks. Now, now I just have one last question for you, and that is, uh, if there was one thing you didn't get to tell him before he passed, what would that be? No, nah, just that I love him, you know what I mean? And uh, I miss him, man. And, uh, you know, I, 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 in my heart, I know that he's in a better place and that he will no longer have to worry about his demons and pain. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I miss him. And, I, you know, like I said, I never told him I love him. I'm not, I'm not that kind of person. I'm not affectionate like that and shit like that. But uh, I did I did love him. You know, man, I love him like a brother because, uh, you know, it's just he was a good guy deep down. He just had problems. You know, that's all. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks. We are here on the Trent Acid Tribute Radio Show. It's False Count Radio in association with the Wrestling Soup. Brings to you a very special tribute show. And on the line with me, I have former ECW referee Mike Keener. Mike, I know you were close to Trent. You know, this has got to be a hard time for you. What is one thing that stuck out most about Trent to you? Yeah, this is a, it's a, it's a rough time. Uh, I knew Trent. He was 14 years old, uh, helping him train him. I, I refereed his first match with Billy Real. Uh, it, 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 just his passion for the business was, was amazing. Even at that young age, you knew, you know, all of them, that whole group, the, those two, and Nick Burke, uh, you know, Johnny Cashmere. You all knew, you knew they had something special. And Trent uh, was was at the, the you know the head of the club in terms of his passion for the business. Uh, you know, and he'd always want his fans to know that, that, you know, that when he went to a building and when he went to a show, uh, and Lord knows I, I drove him in those early years to many, you know, many a show, uh, you know, that he would, he would give a, you know, it's, it's cliche to say it, but, you know, he would always give everything he had, you know, no matter what, uh, you know, bang, bumps and bruises he had taken. You know, he would always go out there and, and, and give everything he had. His, his passion for the business was just unrivaled. It really was. Hmm. Any big story about, like, maybe road uh, trips with Trent or just something that you want to share personally about your experiences with Trent? Uh, probably, probably the funniest one uh, is uh, a match he had, uh, I guess, two, three, maybe four years, two, two or three years ago with, uh, with Devin Moore. And, uh, it was funny. Uh, part of the finish was uh, I think I think it was one of those deals where, where Devin uh, slipped a pair of breast knucks into uh, in the Treads uh, pants, and I was supposed to find it at the ref and uh, disqualify Trent and put Devin over. But Trent was never one to wear conventional, you know, tights and boots, and so his stuff was his stuff was so baggy that we couldn't find, I couldn't find the breast knucks <laughs> and. Uh, it was funny. I'm digging in. I'm digging. I'm digging in his pants. I'm telling them, I don't see anything. What the hell are you talking about? And couldn't find him. Couldn't find. At one point, I even probably reached down, and the crowd thought I was grabbing his Johnson. And uh, finally, Trent kind of shook and, and shimmied to, to kind of save me there, and, and to, to the point where they fell out. And I, I picked them up, and you know, we were able to do the finish the way it was supposed to be. But it was it was a funny it was a funny moment. It really was. But. uh yeah, Trent was always great to you know the ride with shows and, and you know you knew when you were when when you ref matches with Trent and, and Lord knows I did a thousand of them that you know I I had to have my working boots on because he was going to blow me up every time and Lord knows he did. Now, if you were to write a book about Trent Acid, what would the title be? I, I, you know, this is probably another thing that's going to sound cliche, but the, the the wrestler. I mean, not necessarily to say in the movie, but I mean that. That you know, that would sum it up. I mean, that's what he was. That's what he was born to do. That's what he was meant to do. That's what he always wanted to do. You know, it, 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 as much as I knew him in terms of you know trying to ask the wrestler, I, I I had never known him you know to have other passions outside the business. Uh, I learned that later years that he was he was big into his music and he had other things that he liked to do. But 
you know, the, the Trent Asset I know was, was professional wrestler through and through. I mean, that's that's what he was. That's what he wanted to be. Um, and so, yeah, if, if I was going to write a book about him or, or a movie or TV or anything, he'd be the wrestler. I mean, you know, a professional wrestler, anything of that nature, because that's, that's what he was. It's a very fitting title. Now, my co-host, Missionary, has some questions. So I'm going to let Missionary go ahead. Yeah, he has it going, Michael. Um, hey, the- I had a question. Uh, um, Trent Acid's crowning achievement in his career, in your opinion? Uh, Japan. He was so he was so proud of, of not only having gone to Japan, but uh, you know he was uh, he was a champion to win win championships all over, but to win championships in Japan. Uh, I know he was he was very proud of that fact. Uh, you know he loved going over there. Uh, I know when I had the opportunity to go over, in fact, I just spoke to uh, a gentleman by the name of Masa, who's a huge fan uh, in Japan. And, yeah, he, uh, he, you know, him and I reminisced about trans exploits over there and, and how much he loved it and, and loved working over there. He was, unfortunately, you know, a situation occurred where he wasn't able to go to the uh, Big Japan reunion show a few months ago due to, you know, certain circumstances. But Right. I, I gotta say that I, I gotta say going going to Japan and winning a belt and, and, and main eventing shows in Japan was, was probably definitely you know one of the crowning if not the you know crowning achievement uh, of, of his career there's no doubt. Hmm. Uh, here we go. Uh, how about um, what was Trent's biggest goal in life? Uh, I think he achieved it. I, I think being a professional wrestler was his biggest goal in life. Oh, I, okay. I think. Um, that that's that's what he wanted. That's what he got. Um, I think I think what he would have liked, and hopefully, uh, as he was reaching his prime, which you know a lot of people don't realize, Trent Asset was a 15 year veteran of, of the wrestling business, and right. he's still he's only 29 years old. I mean, his prime, you know, his prime was just coming, just coming to be. I mean, you know, as professional wrestlers, we're taught that. Your your late twenties, early thirties. That's that's it. That's your money making years when you can hit your prime, uh, you know, and, and really start to uh, you know capitalize on everything that you've learned uh, in, in your career. And, and I'm sure, I'm sure, like I said, Trent felt fulfilled in terms of that he had accomplished his dream of, of being a professional wrestler right. and traveling the world, traveling the country. I, I think if anything, you know, what he would have liked maybe is to. Uh, Maybe achieve that financial uh, reward that would come with with hitting his prime, and, and, you know, it would, would come with like a, a TNA or a WWE contract right. to, you know, better provide for his family, his his mom who who stood by him through all the years of of him, you know, struggling and and, and trying to make it, and maybe that would have been. But uh, in terms of the transit that I knew and, and the time that he was here, uh, definitely having become a professional wrestler, that was his dream, and he he accomplished it. He got to do what very few people, you know, what very few people have done in their lives, and that's, you know, live this dream. <laughs> that's that's very good. Um, one last question is, uh, what's the one thing about Trent you'll miss, Michael? Uh, the ribs. It's just his, his, his way of, of, of laughing and, and, and making everybody in the locker room laugh. Uh, that's the Trent that I knew uh, that would always... Had the he, he would bust he would bust my paws about every little thing, the way I would say things. Uh, I always like to rib the the new guys just the way we were ribbed when we first started out. You know, calling them the greenies or uh, things of that nature and marks. Just it, it just joking around and Trent would take that to the next level. And every time you would see it, every time I would see it. Hey, 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 Mark, come on, you know, just kind of, <laughs> just kind of be silly, be funny, just, just a bust, bust jobs. Right, right. So that was, you know, that was always funny, you know, that was, that was one thing I, excuse me, um, that was, that's one thing I always miss about Trent is, is his ability to get everybody to laugh and get everybody to, to appreciate what they have, and, you know, that, you know, we, we, we get to make money you know, pretending you know, to do what we do, to pretend to beat each other up and, and go out there and we get to, we get paid to go out there and, and make people chant our names and cheer for us. I mean, what, what better 
what better thing could you ask for than that? I mean, it's really, you know, when you get to live your dream and, and make money at it, it's, you know, you, you can't ask for anything more. Thank you very much, Mr. Keenan. Mm-hmm. Now, on July 10th, 2010, Acid Fest, a tribute to Trent Acid, will be taking place at the ECW Arena. I know you're going to be a part of that. What do you feel is the biggest reason that a fan should come check this out? Well, yeah, I'll definitely be a part of it. Um, I, I, I wouldn't miss it for the world. Uh, if they were a fan of Trent, and even if they weren't a fan of Trent, if they were a fan of uh, professional wrestling, uh, they should come because I, I get news for you. I've seen the list of the talent. Uh, I, I know, um, that these guys are going to go out there and, and do what it is they do, uh, better than anybody. And that is perform. We'll be performing. Yeah, in a sense, they'll be performing for the people in the building. That goes without saying. But more importantly, they'll be performing for Trent. Uh, I think Johnny, uh, Cashmere said it best when he wrote on there that we're going to go out there and do what we do as if as if Trent was in the building and as if he's in the, uh, the Eagles mess watching down and we're going to make him laugh and we're going to make him pop and we're going to do everything that we knew that, that Trent loved to do and that's the reason they should come. Uh, not only that, but you know, this is a this is a family that lost a 29-year-old son uh, I, I'm not aware of anybody's financial situation. That's that's not my business. But uh, people should come out and and make this time uh, and this tragedy as as easy and as as you know as, as less less complicated as possible. Uh, anything that can be contributed to you know the the, the fund to help pay for any final costs that that may occur that have occurred. Uh, would be would be great, you know, very beneficial, and everybody would be so grateful for it. Uh, and, and that's why they should come out, you know, to to pay tribute to this fantastic athlete uh, and, and this just incredible performer, my student, my friend, uh, a brother of mine, and that I will never forget. Is there one thing that you didn't get to tell Trent before he passed that you'd like to tell him? I loved him. Uh, he, I, I, I wish that I, I wish that I didn't just sit down and talk to him on the occasions that I did when he asked me uh, what what he thought he needed to do to um, you know get back in the saddle, get back in the swing of things. Uh, I, I wish I didn't just talk to him. I wish I pounded in his head. I wish I stayed on him, you know, and talked to him. I mean, you can't go back in time. Uh, you know, life life happens. You know, life is, I guess, what they say, life is what happens when you're busy living or, or something like that. And I just, you know, if anything, I, I tell him I love him and I will miss him uh, more than more than I could ever explain. Uh, and, uh, you know, I hope, I, I'm not a very religious man, I never have been, but I hope I get to see him work again someday. And I, that's, you know, that's it. But if, if there's one thing I could tell him, I hope he knew how much I loved him, how much I was proud to have had one, just such a small, tiny part of helping him, you know, in the beginning of his career. I mean, you know, bumping around a 14-year-old kid, I probably thought I was the big man and the bully, but I'm glad he always considered me one of the guys that helped him. And I, I'm humbled by that fact, and I will miss him more than I, more than I could ever explain in words. Well, I'd like to thank you for joining us on this tribute show. No problem. Thanks for having me. All right. We're here on the Trent Acid Tribute Radio Show, and on the line with me is one of Trent's best friends, both in and outside of the ring. Without further ado, let's welcome Billy Real. Billy, I know this is a tough time for you, being that you were such good friends with uh, Trent, but I want to thank you for coming on tonight. Well, bro, I just want to thank you for having me. Um, it's, it's, it's unfortunate circumstances, but... You know, after these last couple of days, it's, it's like uh, I feel blessed, and then um, I feel like it was a gift to have known him and to know him still in spirit. And um, I just want to thank you for like doing this; it's really cool. Now, what is one thing Trent would want his fans to remember most for? Um, Matt Pierce. He was um, <laughs> Mike <laughs> Trent. He was. Uh, I don't know if you would want anybody to know. Um, <laughs> 
Uh, he never wanted, <laughs> maybe I should tell things he never wanted people to know. Uh, like his real name. I think that's what like, that's like, pissed him off. He, 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 that, he was so kayfabe with his name. Like, he, he was really, really, really pissed off with that. But, uh, like, Mike, like, like loved music, uh, obviously wrestling. Um, you know, he was a great guy. He was a great friend. Like, you know, like, honestly, he lived his life, like, uh, like a concert, you know? It was, and, and even though it was, like, an untimely passing, it, it was, I mean, I am just, grateful to have him in my life. Um, he's one of the few guys that you could be pissed off, like really pissed off at him one second and he make you laugh the next second. And be, you know, burn you with a cigarette or something in the last. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, you talked a little bit about his love for music. Was there ever any discussion about him transferring from wrestling to music? Yeah, he loved, like, my love for Jam and he was always like, you know, you gotta understand, like, we, you know, we're breaking into wrestling like it's like 93, like, you know, Nirvana's the shit, and, you know, and, and Mike was, like, he was one of the few, like, the first guys to, like, get into the Seattle scene, and, like, and, like, before, like, the mainstream did, like, he was, like, he always had his, like, finger on the pulse of music, and good music, too, and, um, and that inspired him as well as, like, Nirvana, like, Pearl Jam, like, and, you know, and that all this comes around, like, yeah, we're all growing up, and, like, it's all around 93, 94, and, um, you know, he, he started, like, he was jamming, like, you know what I mean? He was doing his own thing. You know, I wasn't really, it, it, I was into music, but, like, I couldn't play any instruments, so, like, that was, like, a compartment that he shared with his best friend, like, one of his best friends, George, um, and they jammed, you know, like, they would, like, you know, do shows in garages, and then, like, you know, do, like, a, you know, he was classic. <laughs> he was classic uh, at that. He was a classic entertainer, um, and, like, it didn't matter, like, it didn't matter if it was in the ring or if it was music. He was great, like at what he did. Like uh, it was, it's really funny. Like he was a true entertainer. I, I don't know what else to say about that. Like he was definitely um, funny. <laughs> he was good too. Like you, you know what I mean. Like at music, he was pretty good. Now, what is one memory that you will hold dear to you for the rest of your time? Uh, what's the rating on this show? Um, you can you can say whatever as long as it's a fun memory. <laughs> No, I mean, really, um, no, totally, um, jeez, wow, there's so many memories, man, um, God, <laughs> yeah, dude, just thinking about, like, some of the stuff that we did, uh, to one another, to other people, uh, we ripped people on the square really bad, um, Women got the worst at the end of it, I think. <laughs> I, I, I hope. <laughs> uh, like, the, our memories it were always something, like, uh, it was always wild and crazy stuff. Like, I, I want to, like, give, I, I don't want to, like, cheat anybody, like, and say one specific thing. Mm -hmm. um, I know it's not, it's a really general answer, and I'm, like, I'm dilly dallying around, but, um, uh, I, there was just, this, this, <laughs> there was this rat, um, <laughs> and it's just like we, I guess we had been wrestling for like a month. Like, we didn't even, I didn't even think we knew what a rat was. Like, but anyway, we had one. And, uh, yeah, like, <laughs> so we were all trying to bang this one rat. <laughs> like, dude, there's so many rat stories, man. Oh my god. But yeah, but this, specific, this specific rat story, um, involves, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I think he thought it would be funny. Like, there's this girl, and, and like, she was uh, real shy. Like she, she was hot as, as hell. Like she, but she was something wrong with her. Like she was afraid of what she looked like, dude. I, I swear, he met her on some chat line, and we were like fourteen or fifteen years old, and like we would go meet this girl. It was like me, him, and um, uh, Robbie Marino from CCW, and um, we all wanted a banger, right? So, like, obviously, like we're like passing this girl around, right? <laughs> And he takes, and like, I have this girl, like, and like, one of us is playing a piano. The, the other one's making out with the girl, and Trent, it's like, uh, Trent goes into the kitchen and pisses in this girl's ice cream and puts it back in the fridge. And like, dude, we're like all hiding downstairs, like, like after he, he doesn't tell anybody, he like pissed, like, and he pissed in the fuck, in the gallon. And like, uh, we're hiding in the basement. 
and and all of a sudden the mother comes down so like and I, I don't know what makes the mother like go for the ice cream bro but like we're all snuck into this house and we're like we're like in this like like room with a deck and the mother goes and grabs the scooper and like the ice cream had been sitting for like 30 minutes so it's like st- it's like frosty to see you know vanilla chocolate strawberry ice cream and I guess she thought she was like Missy you left she's like Missy you left the ice cream out and she's like oh, all right mom whatever like I try to hide us and she goes and she drinks the ice cream and you hear <sighs> like what is that and then me him and Rob jump off the like this two foot like balcony like this ten like no it's two foot it's like <laughs> a story and a half balcony dude and we just start running away like uh, pants are falling back it was it was it's hilarious, dude. I know that it took me an hour to tell this little story, but I'm like revisiting it in my mind. It's so funny, man. Like, <laughs> like who does? Who just pisses in ice cream? Like, who does that? <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, being such a good friend you were with Trent, um, if you were to write a book about his life, what would the title be? Wow. Um, you know, it's actually brought to my attention. Like, you know, you should. You know, I'm like, dude, I. I like, was I don't, like, that, like, as much as it is, like, to touch that subject. Um, I would honestly, I would, I would name it after, uh, I would name it after his, his own writings, The Acid Diaries. Um, it was something that he invented. So, you know, obviously, I would just put a pen to paper and, and just use him to write it and, um, have him write it for me with, with my hand. I know it sounds ridiculous, but, like, The Acid Diaries, definitely. Now, if there was one thing you didn't get to tell Trent, you know, while you were around him, what would that be? Uh, there really wasn't anything. Uh, I think this is the cool thing about me and Trent was that uh, we let our, we let each other fucking we let each other have everything. Like we let each other know everything. Um, you know what we liked, what we didn't like, what we loved, what we hated. Who you know, who was a piece of shit. Who you know, who was over, who was a rat, who was a mark. Everything that you could possibly tell your best friend is what we told each other. There was not anything, there's not a stone that was not unturned. And I'm really, um, like, dude, I'm, like, I'm, you know, I'm obviously hurt about losing Trent, but at the same time, um, by having him in my life, I'm grateful. I'm so grateful. And, and the fact that, um, you know, we made amends and, uh, and peace, like, and really, were really cool um, at the time of his passing. Like um, a lot of people don't know that. You know, a lot of like you know the people in the inner circle. I know you did. Um, you know, and um, it, it, there's really nothing that we didn't touch base upon. You know. Mm-hmm. Now, my co-host missionary has a couple questions for you. So, missionary, go ahead. Yeah. Hi, Billy. Real. Uh, wish we could be talking under better circumstances. But uh, I had a couple of questions for you that uh, probably only you could answer best. In your opinion. What was uh, Trent's crowning achievement or moment in his career? Um, wow. Uh, CCW, best of the best tournament. Um, is a game there. Uh, any match for Homicide, that, that uh, a Ring of Honor match he was really proud of. Um, you know, he did smash down uh, over the month, Sunday Night Heat. Uh, you know, I, that came out of left field. Um, but, you know... Like I, I'd probably say him versus Homicide, uh, Ring of Honor. Um, all his Backseat Boy stuff was great. His DSEC stuff was a lot of fun. Um, but I mean, I could pick so many memories of him in the ring. Um, but like, I honestly think his, like, you know, his greatest achievement, um, is like, you know, just the way he, like, the way he expressed himself and by, and sometimes by not expressing himself. Like, I, I, it's hard for me to say, like, I guess for people that know him uh, will understand, like, uh, he's, a, he's a really funny guy, man. Like, it's so hard to explain in words just uh, what one moment, you know. But right. those that I named, the, you know, all, like, I don't think he had one favorite moment. I think his life was this, uh, just moment after moment of crowning achievements, you know. Like, I really do. Um yeah. I did. I didn't know he loved. He loved CCW, and he loved the CCW fans. Um, and uh, being a co-owner of Wrestling Unplugged, 
definitely something that, you know, like all these things, I don't think he had a biased favor towards anything. Um, and it echoes, you know, Suplex and his dolls on the rug, you know, it's right up there. <laughs> yeah, he T-boned, he T-boned Suplex his dog, <laughs> bro. He T-boned Suplex his dog on the rug. Like, he grabbed its high leg, grabbed its ass, and T-boned it. <laughs> Funny, bro. He even abused the dog. Like, he let it bump nice, but, like, dude, he just, he loved bumping animals. I don't <laughs> he, I, you know, he probably liked that more than anything, really, like, bumping the animal. Like, he would always bump some defenseless animal. <laughs> <laughs> Who was Trent Acid's heroes and inspirations in life? Um, oh, wow. It's just like, I guess it depends on what part of his life. Um, you know, there's early career. There's, you know, there, there's peak. You know, there's, there's many points of, of his life. Um, so you have to be more specific. Like, like, I guess before, you know, before he, uh, he was a big mark for uh, Shane Douglas. He was a big mark for Sabu. He's a big mark for Raven, even though, uh, I don't know. I guess they, you know, have words, whatever. But, I mean, they, he was, he marked for them guys big. Um, Shawn Michaels, uh, Bret Hart. Um, we always marked out for, uh, Gary Wolf's promos. As a matter of fact, guys, I, I have the, I have the voicemail that I'm going to give it to you, uh, that he left me two days before he passed away. One other question I had, Billy was, uh, what's the one thing about uh, Michael Verde you'll miss? Uh, his smile, uh, his passion for life, um, his passion for wrestling. He, he, he knew how to light up a room, and uh, you just always knew you were going to have a good time, and you, you know you were going to laugh. I mean, the... the there was times we couldn't even get in the ring with each other. Like we die, we were dying laughing. Like the, we were living the dream. You know, like uh, we set out to achieve things together, and when we did, and um, and and you know, I'll always say to him in that light, um, that that infectious smile. Now, I, I have one more question for you before we go ahead and wrap this up, and that is, uh, you know, of course you guys are doing the tribute for Trent called Acid Fest. What can people expect out of Acid Fest? You can expect to have, and, you know, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that uh, Acid Fest is going to be everybody's interpretation of what Trent Acid would want for his show. Um what you're going to get is a little bit of everything. Um, but you, I, I can guarantee you're going to have a great time. You're going to have fun. You're going to remember. And you'll never forget. Try not to lose forever. Thank you very much for joining us on the Turn Acid Tribute Radio Show. You got it, brother. Thank you, Billy Real. Hey, and for those people that are still listening somehow through the, the wonders of BTR recording. Um, I just wanted you to know that the wrestling newscom uh, uh, server has gone down, um, but it's to a good reason. We were last streaming to over 140 live listeners, and I believe you guys ate up all the bandwidth and crashed it. So shame on you for enjoying this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, thank you very no. much. I mean, it's just <laughs> it's just so amazing that there's just such an outpouring. It's just. Wow, I mean, I can't wait to put this in high quality for everyone to keep. I, I think everybody's going to keep this, you know, for a very long time. And every time that they see Trent Acid, you know, I hope that they pull this out and just relive some of the memories that uh, uh, his friends and his family and, and just his brothers alone, you know, shared uh, uh, about Trent. Yeah, I, I would have to agree, of course. You know, I, I met Trent initially in 2007 through Pitbull Gary Wolf. And he he was always, you know, one of the most down to earth guys. He'd get on the phone with you and I kid you not, whether you had five minutes or five hours, he would spread it five hours. He would want to talk about anything and everything just because he loved talking to his friends and keeping in touch and making sure that everyone was okay. Yeah. I mean, that's just the kind of guy that Trent was. 
Um, I remember helping him set up his MySpace. Of course, you know, Missy Sampson helped him set up his Facebook, but I helped him set up the MySpace. And I remember sitting on the phone with him and just talking about his career and, and what he does day to day and, you know, just his life and all that. And it, it was just really touching. And speaking of touching, we have one last interview up before we go ahead and play the uh, the ending recording where you'll hear Trey talk uh, for one of the last times on a voicemail. But uh, we have one last really touching story and goes about 30 minutes, and that's his former tag team partner. Well, actually, you know, I'm not going to use the word former. His tag team partner, the other half of the Backseat Boys, Johnny Cashmere. So why don't we go ahead and cue to that? You know, I, I just got to say, it's it's more than just a tag team partner. I mean, Johnny Cashmere and Trent Acid are left and right. These guys um, literally did share the bonds of success together i mean it's it's so much more than just a job and and i i just want to express that from my point of view that these two weren't just working a match together these 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 men were really brothers and and this is you know this is obviously the final interview of of the show but uh it's it's definitely one of the most touching All right, we're here on the Trent Acid Tribute Radio Show, and on the line with me, I have Trent's tag team partner, Johnny Cashmere, on the line. Johnny, how are you doing? Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. I'm doing, you know, I'm doing better. Uh, it was tough on me. It was tough on everybody. Uh, you know, it was one of those things that uh, you just can't prepare for it. You know, even though you, you see someone on a path that you know can't be good you know you still hit shit just oh man you know i'm still not back to my routine uh, i bet you actually i'm yeah as we speak right now i am on the acid fest um facebook page and i'm inviting people right now so every time i invite people then i invite like uh six seven eight hundred people <laughs> and then something happens where uh I forget to hit send, and then I lose it all. It happened twice already in a row. Oh, damn. Now I'm sending like every 30 or 40 people. Yeah. So I'm going to take a take a break from this right now so I can give you my attention. Uh, no. I do appreciate you guys doing the show. No problem. You know, and I want to uh, take time out to thank you for coming on. My uh, first question for you is, you know, being you were around Trent for so long, what do you think Trent wants his fans to remember most for? Um, his passion. I mean, I know that's cliche, and a lot of people say the passion, the passion, the passion. It's uh, overused, more overused than, you know, the DDT nowadays. <laughs> and I think Trent really did have that. Uh, I think I, I almost feel bad for Trent that so many people use the term passion because it waters it down, and then it doesn't mean as much when you say it for someone like Trent, but... Trent was one of those guys who would go out there, and even if there was eight people in the crowd, he'd put on a great match, you know. Uh, he would still work his hardest. Um, he would get more out of his opponents than anyone else would ever get out of his opponents. And what happened was people would want to work Trent. It was like there was like a line of people who wanted to work Trent. And I've heard so many people now that he's gone, oh, man, I really wanted to have worked him. And, and it's funny. I think to myself, you know, on, the, on a level, they are being genuine, and, and it's flattering. But on another level, it's, it's almost selfish because they know that Trent is going to pull something out of them that they can't pull out of themselves in a match. Hmm. And they wanted to work them because you grow when, when that happens. You evolve as a wrestler. So people wanted to wrestle Trent because, you know, you learn from wrestling people better than you. I mean, you can learn from wrestling people worse than you, but it's more like a what not to do type thing. But right. when you wrestle someone like Trent, um, you know how they say people can some people can wrestle a broomstick and it will be a good match. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, like Trent is that. You know, then people have said that he has the Shawn Michaels gift, the Shawn Michaels gene, the hmm. show stealing quality, and I think that is probably the legacy he'd want. Is is the indie Shawn Michaels is what he was. Yeah, in he, my opinion. He was definitely over. I mean, over, definitely. But when I say the indie Shawn Michaels, I mean more than just fan reaction. Of course, he had the crowd reaction. Um, but he was the kind of guy that would give you a main event match no matter where he was on the show. Mm -hmm. um, the kind of guy that you almost had to put near the end of the show because people couldn't follow his matches is what was happening. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah. No, I totally understand. When I say Shawn Michaels, I mean the show stealing gene. The ability to go out there and have match of the night with various different wrestlers. I mean, you know, Michaels had match of the night with Vader and, you know, people that were never having match of the night. Uh, Acid did that. You know, a lot of people, you say to them, what was your favorite match? They're going to tell you it was either against Trent Acid or against the Backseat Boys. And you're going to hear that from a lot of people. Now, speaking of the Backseat Boys, you guys have been, or you've been posting on your Facebook, uh, you know, a lot of pictures and videos of you with Trent and Trent with fans. What of those matches with Trent sticks out to you the most? <laughs> Probably the thing we did, the skit we did on WWE um, back in the day, it was 2001, Easter Sunday, when WWF still had their uh, Times Square, New York, cafe and it was uh we had gotten a phone call around geez noon from dave sapolsky had called trent and said you know can you guys be up there in like three hours and that's about how long it takes to make the drive <laughs> and we went up there and they had us uh be the backseat dudleys and paul Heyman was working in the back with taz and michael cole and albert was there and we did a whole angle with albert and you can see it all on youtube it's on uh, my facebook you just search johnny cashmere you'll find my Facebook. Um, and it's right on there. You just look on the wall. But I think that, and probably our matches against Rick Blade and Nick Mondo and CZW. Um, CZW was still a, a new company, Future Uncertain, and they had the hardcore edge, uh, but they didn't have the wrestling. And when me and Trent wrestled Blade and Mondo in our series of matches, suddenly CZW had the wrestling. And it brought us a whole new volume of fans, a whole new, uh, a whole new, uh, like tier of, of fans showed up. Now, now you had the hardcore fans and you had the smart marks and that, that's really what, what CZW relied on back in the day. And it was matches like me and Trent first played a Mondo that really set the stage and the foundation. It was like, okay, locker room top that. <laughs> so then it was like next month, everyone tried to top it. And if someone did, then it was, okay, great, now we have to top that next month. And that's really the game we played for, for years. Now, if you were to write a book about Trent's life, what would the title be? Oh, my goodness. Um, the title of the book about Trent's life would be, um, I mean, I guess, I guess Sinatra has I did it my way, so we couldn't do that, but... It would have to be something like that. It would have to be something like, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, jumping, humping, and, you know, pumping the Trent Acid story or something, you know. <laughs> I don't know. It would have to be something along the lines of, uh, it would have to capture his larger-than-life personality, uh, his, his sense of humor. Uh, definitely a ladies' man. To, uh, to put into perspective for you <laughs> how much of a ladies' man he is, you know, the, the average guy on the street might be out, you know, fishing with a fishing pole uh, while Trent's in the boat, you know, with his arms open and the fish are just jumping into the boat. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's, that's the difference, you know. So it's something that encompasses all that, plus his wrestling. I'd have to think about that. <laughs> that's the kind of thing that if I was writing his biography, that would probably take me eight or nine months to come up with the answer <laughs> and I would probably be woken out of a sound sleep a few times with ideas and, and that would be a big thing. I, I'd obsess on that. Now my co-host uh, Missionary has a couple questions for you. So Missionary, go ahead. Yeah, hey Johnny. I wanted to know, um, <clears throat> in your opinion, what was Trinacid's crowning achievement in his career? Well, I guess his crowning achievement in his career was when he had the Big Japan Junior Heavyweight title, and uh, he had won it. Uh, well, he actually, let me think here, how did this go? Him and I had a match. In, uh, it wasn't Corrigan Hall. It was Yokohama Arena in Japan. Mm -hmm. It was me and him against Men's Teo and Jun Kasai. Me and him won the tag belts in that match and the junior belt. I became Big Japan Junior Champion. He became CZW Junior Champion. And then I lost the belt to Ruckus. Ruckus lost the belt to Trent. Trent ends up in America defending that title. So I think his B 
being the big Japan junior heavyweight champion and having the belt and having it in America for as long as he did, um, I think that was probably his crowning achievement, is, is off the top of my head, as, as well as he, he had a dark match in right. WWE. So those two things. Um, what do you think Trent's biggest goal in life was? I think he wanted a, a TV contract. I think he wanted to, to get on television, you know, to be like a, a Brian Danielson or a, a Evan Bourne to be on TV and to have a chance for America to either fall in love with him or cast him aside. I think that he looked at it as, as in his mind, he thought, regardless of what the brass thing, regardless of what a Vince McMahon or, you know, a Laurinaitis or any, any of the guys in the back might think, right. I know if I can get out in front of that crowd that I can endear myself and that America will want to see more of me. He's confident about that. He knew that. He used to say that. And I think that if he would have been given that opportunity, and I'm not saying I fault WWE, and there was no conspiracy, it, you know, we never reached out. Uh, you know, everyone that got signed sent something to the Fed. They did something. I mean, we, we just expected, oh, we'll just be good enough. And we'll just shine bright enough that they can't ignore us. And <laughs> it doesn't work that way, you know? Yeah. So had we reached out to the Fed back then, do I think we would have got something? Yeah, I think we would have. I think we could have had developmental, or we could have at least had uh, more dark matches, at the very least. Right. Um, if it wasn't for, you know, Rob Feinstein and Gabe Sapolsky having the connection and just saying, like, well, let's send Johnny and Trent, you know, we know they'll make us look good. If it wasn't for that, we wouldn't have even had what we had. It was their whim, so to speak. I got you. You know, if they had just got off, if they had just got off the phone with a different wrestler and that person was on their mind, they may have given it to them. But we were on their mind at that time and they gave it to us. And we've always been thankful and appreciative for that. Now, um, who was Trent Acid's hero and inspiration in life? I guess Eddie Vedder. It's funny, Trent always was a big Pearl Jam fan, huge Pearl Jam fan. And one of the crowning moments in his life outside of wrestling was when he went to a Pearl Jam concert, and Eddie Vedder has this thing where he had opened up, I guess, a, a bottle of wine, like a bottle of wine mm -hmm. or a uh, it might have been alcohol, I don't know. And he let Trent drink it, like pulled Trent. I don't know if he pulled him up on the stage or if he just sort of bent down and let Trent take a swig and handed him the bottle and Trent handed it back. And I guess they got the high five. And, you know, Trent said he couldn't sleep that night. It was, you know, the biggest night of his life. And I know Nick Burke was there in the audience to see it. Hmm. And uh, I know that was big. And, and it's funny because I always sort of modeled my look after Chris Cornell from Soundgarden, and he kind of always modeled his look he being Trent after Eddie Vedder and Eddie Vedder and Chris Cornell used to be Temple of the Dog. They broke up and they each had one of the most successful bands of all times. Right. So I'm kind of hoping that, you know, the backseat boys have now spawned vanilla man candy, which is a tribute. It's, it's a tribute band to the backseat boys is what it is. It's a, it is, it's its own entity. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but it's also uh, a tribute to Trent acid and it's myself and Matt Walsh. And we're going to add a few more members. Um, well, I mean, me and me and, and Walsh are vanilla man candy, but we're going to add a few more members that when we're all together, we're kind of like, you know, Acid Angels or Acid Avengers or whatever. Yeah. I'm sure we won't think of, we'll think of something less lame, but you know what I mean. Um, but we're going to try to get a stable together to honor Trent um, with his students and, you know, people that he helped in the business so that he can sort of, uh, his name can live on. You know what I mean? Like his grandkids in the business, so to speak, or right. kids. People inspired by him. Yeah, exactly. What's the one thing about Trent or Michael Verdi you'll miss? <laughs> the one thing. Uh, me and him both had very messed up sleep schedules our whole life. And I, he was the one person that I knew if I woke up and it was 3 in the morning, I could call him. If I woke up and it was 7 in the morning, I could call him. And even if he wasn't awake, he would just say, yeah, oh, oh, yeah, I was awake, I was awake, and he'll pretend he was. And you could still talk, you know, he, he just never slept. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, he slept, but not the way, like, I might sleep, you know, nine hours at a time. He would sleep five hours here, four hours there, maybe. You know, it's different. Right. So I miss that about him. 
uh, his laugh. You know, he lit up a room when he laughed. If you didn't know him, you, who was that kid with that laugh? And you, know, you couldn't hate him. No one hated him. There was no one that, that felt like they were his acquaintance. Everyone is either his friend or they didn't know him at all. But I, I've never heard anyone say, I don't like Trent or I dislike him or I hate him. I've never heard that come out of people's mouths, right. which is interesting because, you know, he's as Italian as I am <laughs> and he can be as spiteful and as stubborn as I can. And he just doesn't have the, the rub people the wrong way gene is what it is. Well, I thank you for sharing that insight into Trent Acid. Um, I appreciate it very mm-hmm. much, Johnny Cashmere. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I have some. Now, um, Acid Fest is, of course, July 10th at the arena. What can fans right. expect from that event? Uh, I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be all of us that really knew Trent getting together to honor him the way you would honor Trent. Uh, Trent was religious. Trent did accept Christ in his life. So honoring Trent at a church is definitely, uh, a good way to honor Trent, but it's not the only way to honor Trent. Uh, and I think us all coming together at that arena in, in his hometown, uh, a building that he's been wrestling in for 10 years straight, maybe even more. And before that, he was a fan in. Uh, we're all going to be there to dedicate the night to him as if he was watching in the crowd and make him enjoy it. Uh, the main event is me versus Devin versus John Zandy. Three of us, I don't know if you know the history, me and Devin never liked each other. Well, we used to, and then we had a big falling out. Me and Dan Dig had a huge falling out to the point where I started PWU, and we ran in the same building. I mean, there was mega, mega heat. Right. And we're putting that all aside, and we're going to try to have a wrestling match for a trend. Uh, you're going to see Homicide and B-Boy take on Ruckus and Sanjay Dutt. Hmm. That's going to be an amazing match in itself. Uh, there's the Trent Acid Rumble. And we're going to add a lot more to it. Um, there's a talent list on my uh, Facebook. You can also follow on Twitter, uh, twitter.com slash acidfest. Okay. And uh, it's it's just going to be everyone coming together to make Trent proud. Uh, you know, Balls Mahoney, Axel Rotten, Todd Gordon, myself, uh, you know, Donnie B, Trent's old manager. Um who else will be I'm trying to think who else will even be there. Uh, you know, everyone that, that was really close with Trent will be there. His, his best friends, his family will be there in the audience. All the money uh, that we make goes towards the Acid Memorial Fund, towards his uh, funeral, towards his burial costs. Um, its admission is free with a $10 donation to the Acid Memorial. Now, if people don't have the $10, you know, get in touch with me. We still want you to be able to make it. You know, Trent would want you there. Um, and people can so donate whatever they want, right? I mean, they don't have to just give only ten dollars; they can give fifty or a hundred. No, yes, 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 they can. There'll be uh, inside. We'll have spots where they can donate more. Okay. Uh, also, I know there will be T-shirts for sale uh, for the Trent Acid Memorial. Uh, I'm not sure how much they'll be, but I know they will be there, and they're only on sale in the building. You have to be in the building to get them. They're not on sale on the internet or anything like that. Uh, I know we're going to have programs for sale that chronicle Trent's, Trent's career, a nice biography. Uh, when you come in, hopefully we'll have uh, the, the event starts at 2.30, so if doors open at 2 or 1.30 or whenever doors open, uh, we'll have stuff playing on the Tron of, you know, maybe a video montage of Trent's greatest matches. or So people that might be there that didn't actually get to see Trent wrestle, you know, maybe they're a friend of a friend or whatever, you know, they can appreciate exactly how good Trent was, you know, I mean, he really, he was standout. I mean, he was that good. And, you know, it really, I know they say there's different stages of grief and I know anger is one of the first and I'm definitely switching into the anger because, you know, it just, it makes me mad that someone has to die for people to say, Oh, he was so talented. He should have had something, you know, yeah. I know we never reached out to the Federation, but it's just amazing that to me that someone didn't see the, I mean, Trent's like a multi-purpose tool, you know, in a world of, you know, the old pools. I mean, he's just, uh, he could do anything. Trent, I need, I need a comedy. I need you to make the crowd laugh during this match. Okay, I got it. Trent, I need a five-star, uh, you know, match of the year candidate. Okay, got it. 
Trent, I, I, I hate to say it, but I need a hardcore match tonight. Oh, no problem. You got it. Wow. I mean, that's the kind of guy he was. And he did it better than anybody. He did hardcore better than the hardcore guys half the time. I mean, I watched him do a high cross body into a, a ring filled with uh, thumbtacks. I couldn't believe my eyes. Oh. And he took them all right in his hands. You could see him waving his hands off like, ha, ha, ha. Let me tell you something. I, I, one of my cats knocked a comic book off the wall, and the uh, thumbtack was sticking up on the ground, and I, of course, didn't have my sandal on. And I, I've never been in a thumbtack match, and I felt that, and I said, oh, my God, I can't imagine. And these guys do, they walk around barefooted. I can't imagine. But Trent did thumbtack, something I never did. It takes balls. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you know, for fans that can't come to the Acid Fest, how can people send donations um, we had a PayPal up, but the PayPal now is asking for the death certificate. And it's not like I'm going to call the family right now and say, Hey, we need the death certificate. So we're probably going to reopen a new PayPal is what we're going to do. Uh, until that's open, um, basically just keep an eye on the, uh, Facebook. And if you, if you need to, they can contact me via Facebook and I can give an address. Uh, I wouldn't want to give it out here but I could give it out for people that are serious about sending something. Uh, and if you can't make it, if you live in another state, whatever, uh, it will be taped for DVD by uh, RF Video and Smart Mark Video. And I even think Modtrom, who tapes Jersey All Pro, I think they're even coming. Huh. So we'll have three tape distributors that will have it. Um, and we'll also uh, believe hybrid, it's called www.hybrident. ENT, hybrid ENT dot TV. Uh, they have a paper stream up right now, a pay per view basically of Trent's greatest matches. And it's only, I think, four ninety nine, and all proceeds from that go to the Acid Memorial. Oh, so goodness. you could watch that. Uh, it'll also be streaming the event live uh, that I know of right now. If for some reason that's not going to happen, I'll let you know, but I'm pretty sure you'll be able to see it live on the internet as it's happening, the actual event. And hopefully that will also go towards the uh, Trinacid Memorial uh, Fund is what we're hoping for. So, yeah, I already saw there was a uh, tri- uh, there was a commercial for the Trinacid tribute on uh, on YouTube as well. I've already started posting that around Facebook, giving out details for Acid Fest. So, I appreciate it, and we were asking fans to you know take the uh, the poster for the Acid Fest and post it on you know, people's walls. And I told them, you know, think strategically, you know, people that maybe are famous, you know, posted on, you know, you know, I don't know who, uh, Johnny Fairplay's wall or, you know, posted on Oprah Winfrey's wall or, <laughs> you know, people that, people that even if they take it down, so what, it's still up for a day, right? you know, and I know I, I want to thank the fans because I know there was a huge presence at the uh, WWE Raw in Philly on Monday. I know I got a bunch of emails from fans telling me that like just about every car in the parking lot had a flyer on it for the Acid Fest. I know there was Trent Acid signs in the crowd that got confiscated. Yeah. Um, so I, I just can't thank everybody enough for their support with all of this. And, you know, it's just we're all grieving. We're all mourning. Uh, you know, he was the closest person to me. We traveled the world together. Um, no one knew Mike Verdi like I did and vice versa. Uh, even our own brothers didn't weren't as close with us as, as we were to each other. And, uh, you know, I know he would want everyone to have fun. You know, I said, we're going to put the fun in funeral for Trent on the, uh, the 10th, you know, and I know that would mean the world to him if everybody came out. And, you know, like I said, we're all grieving. We don't have the energy right now to be out promoting this thing. Like I would a, a PW event. I don't have time to go door to door with flyers. And, right. You know, I, I have to take off work and I have to get back. I have to get back on track now. You know, it's been a week and a half. Yeah. And uh, that's why we're just asking fans to help on Facebook and Twitter, um, MySpace. Anything they can help with is definitely, you know, bulletins. Uh, like I said, posting the, the poster on walls. Anything they can do is huge. And, and guys, this is huge. You know, having broadcasts like this really help a whole lot, you know, and people can have them on their computer while they're cleaning their house or, you know, while they're doing chores or, you know, I just think these kind of broadcasts are, are good for that. You know, it's good for getting the uh, information out there. And I appreciate you guys giving us your time. I know you didn't have to. 
Oh no, yeah. it's it's Appreciate everything. absolutely wonderful. I mean, it's being streamed from Blog Talk Radio as well as Wrestling News dot com and the Don Tony and Kevin Castle Great. show. So, I mean, it's going to have a lot Great. of listeners, and a lot of people will become aware of, you know, Trent Acid, uh, his life, Acid Fest, everything. So, well, thanks, guys. It means a whole lot to me and the family and everybody. And the family will all be there on the tenth to accept the donation at the end. Trent's brother will even be there. Uh, it's going to be an emotional night, but like I said, it's going to be fun. It's, it's about fun, so that's what it's all about. Everybody show up to have fun, and you won't be disappointed. Absolutely. Can that's I ask you one point final point. question, Johnny? What is, I'm sorry? I was going to ask, is there any way I can ask you one final question? Yeah. What is the one piece of wisdom that you learned in all your years with Trent Acid? Um, Trent lived by... What I like to call, and this is my words, not his, actually it's Byron Katie's words, other people's opinions are none of my business. Hmm. And I think that he really just didn't care what other people said. It didn't occur, it didn't affect him. And he made every decision from the heart, from his gut. And his whole life was on purpose. And, uh, you know, I finally have learned to live like that. And... I think that was probably what made him different than everybody else. His uniqueness and strength of character that he wanted to be him and nobody else, you know. Yeah. Um, when I was younger, I went through phases where I wanted to be anybody but Johnny Cashmere. And now I thank God and I wouldn't want to be anybody but me. And Trent, from age 15, always wanted to be Trent and be the best Trent he could be and enjoyed it. He enjoyed it. He was comfortable in his skin and he enjoyed himself out there. And he wasn't self-conscious, you know, the kind of guy that would get up and dance even if people were watching, who, you know, and I wouldn't. And, he, you know, I was just a, I was a sheltered kid from the suburbs, and he didn't allow me to be timid and shy, and he would grab you by the hand and pull you along if necessary, but he forced me to live and to experience, and after a while, I was able to uncringe and go, oh my God, there was really nothing to be afraid of the whole time. But I would have never known that if he didn't force it. Yeah. And let me tell you, just trying to keep up with him was a full-time job. I couldn't do it after a while, guys. <laughs> he didn't rest. I don't think he ever even drank a glass of water. I mean, he just was always on the go. Wow. And, you know, you burn the candle that bright at both ends. You know, it shines bright as hell, but unfortunately it burns out early. Yeah. He lived his life exactly as he wanted to. Uh he experienced 70 plus years in 29 years. Hmm. And I don't think that he was meant to live past his, this age um, or else he would have rested in his life. That's how I look at it. But he knew, he knew not to rest. And I was always like, Jesus, what's the hurry? Calm down. You know, no, this is once in a lifetime. We got to do this. We got to, we got to experience this. We got to do it. Thank God. You know, I wouldn't have a cat. You know how they say character arc is the most important thing of a good miniseries or a good TV show or movie. Right. You know, a character starts off in the beginning one way and by the end he's completely different and it's completely believable. Uh, if Trent wasn't in my life, I am afraid what my character arc would be. You know? Yeah. He definitely, uh, he definitely made me evolve. So, and now I feel like I'm ready to take someone under my wing the way he had me under his. I'm ready to now pay it forward and help someone else evolve. Whereas I was the one that needed the chaperoning before. Now I'm ready to be the chaperone. And then I really get the patron back. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. That's an awesome way, you know, to look at it too. Yeah. It's the least I can do. Oh, yeah. Well, I'd like to thank you for coming on and doing this for us. Yeah. I mean, thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming on, man. Mm -hmm. Good luck with the rest of the show, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you, right, Thank you very much. Have a great one. All right, you So we're getting ready to wrap up the uh, <clears throat> the Blog Talk Radio recording version of the uh, Trent Acid Tribute Show. Um, we're going to play the final voicemail um, given to us by his best friend, Billy Real. Um, and then we will have a 10-bell uh, salute in honor of uh, what Trent Acid is and means to all of us. Of course. 
Oh, yeah, and, of course, Acid Fest, July 10th. That is the last plug. Check out CZWrestling.com, and now we're going to go to the voice recording off Billy Reel's phone, one of the last known that Trent Acid left, so let's go ahead and go to that. If there was ever an award for Mark of the Year, you would definitely come in second. Get me the real people. WWE stole my gimmick. The men's wants me. TNA wants me. But I'm old now to see. With my lawyers. If I got a case. I'm gonna get paid. And then I'm gonna own it all. And then I'm gonna take over Vince's shop. Or maybe I'll open up ECW again so I can get that television title back from 10. 